Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameronkin Barwalker, and welcome to the bar with an X. May the 4th is tomorrow. Do you find yourself a Jedi? Do you find yourself a Sith? Are you somewhere in between? What side of the Force do you find yourself on? This evening, I find myself on the side of the vices, the evils, the alcohol, and otherwise. Did you bring your lightsaber? I brought my lightsaber. And I turned it on, and this is my lightsaber. Alexa, turn on the bar lights. Okay. And so we begin May the 4th cocktails. It's technically May the 3rd right now, because it's a Wednesday, and May the 4th this year happens to be on a Thursday, but we can celebrate a little earlier if we want to. I got all set up and whatnot, too. I got my lightsaber of various different colors. I like the blue one a little bit more because it's just got a more vibrant color to it, but alas, we find ourselves here, and I decided to dress up for the occasion. What better way to celebrate cocktails, alcohol, and otherwise than by leaning into the dark side of the force, the dark side of literally everything, which always, always happened to be alcohol, obviously. At least that's the vice that we choose here at this fine establishment. Tonight, did a little bit of thinking, did a little bit of experimenting and whatnot. How do you best capture Star Wars? To be perfectly honest, I don't have a very good answer to that question. All I know is that there are cocktails out there that are inspired by the various planets of Star the Star Wars universe, like Alderaan, or perhaps Tatooine, or otherwise. To be perfectly honest, I am not that big a Star Wars guy, but I love the concept of it. I've watched every single movie at least twice in my life, and for some reason can't recall most of the details that happened, so I have to rely on the other people in my life to really fill in all the gaps and whatnot for me. Uh, as the lovely people of tonight has, have already done, there have been some community members who popped in their ideas and whatnot, and it got me thinking, and it got me feeling really, really creative. So I hope I have a really nice show in, uh, in, in plan. In plan. In, there's words for that for y'all this evening. Uh, I want to get things started over here with some really, really fun stuff. Is it, if anybody out there is a Star Wars person, I must ask, are you a Jedi? Are you a Sith? Are you on the, the good side? The, light, the side of the lights? So the dark side? Do you have your midi-chlorians all up in whatever? I sound like an app. I sound either like a nerd or I have, or I sound like I have no idea what I'm talking about. And to be perfectly honest, it's a little bit of both. So we'll get things started over here with a couple of cocktails and whatnot. There have been, over the course of the past few months or so, just like a lot of suggestions given. A lot of them fell into the Star Wars category and I was just waiting, waiting for the day be able to do a Star Wars cocktail theme, and finally we're here. It happens once a year, or it could technically happen any time of the year that we want to. George Lucas does not, or did not, uh, just, just restrict himself to any particular time of the year to be celebrating the Star Wars of everything, and otherwise too. In any case, we'll get things started over here. I got like a couple different things. If any suggestions come up, feel free to shout them out. We'll try to see if we can figure out something. We're, we're all fun around here. The, the, the chaosness of the Sith Lord, it's, it's what it's all about. It's all about chaos and fun and... I don't really know. You tell me. I, I'm not the scholar here. Only when it comes to the alcohol am I the scholar. When it comes to the world of Star Wars and sci-fi and whatnot, you can be the master. Educate me, if you'd like to be. I'm going to start things off this evening with a cocktail recommendation from my pal Domstar, who a while ago sent me a whole slew of different small vertical videos from this guy called the Sin City Bartender. He does some really, really cool nerdy stuff over there. So I wanted to kind of put start things off with something that seemed really cool, took advantage of some of the technology that we have over here. It's a blender. I'm spoiling it for you. Uh, in, inspired by the character of which I am dressed up as, like the Anakin Skywalker before he gets all Darth Vader-y. I believe... There is an area in the Star Wars universe called Mustafar, and I believe that's where Anakin might have fallen into a lava flow, perhaps? So the first cocktail I have in store for you all this evening is a little dip onto the Sith side of things, or at least as we get to the Sith side. It's called the Mustafar Lava Flow, and we'll start things off post-haste. So allow me for a moment to pull up my recipe over here for the Mustafar Lava Flow. It's kind of cool. I really like 
cocktails that really go all in on what they're attempting to reference. And this one in particular is not an exception there. So the Mustafar Lava Flow, at least from what I'm looking at it in my picture here, looks super duper awesome. It looks like it is straight up like dark black sand or obsidian like um, stones and whatnot. And, and like a set of lava flowing down the sides of it. It kind of reminded me of, oh, there's like, um, there's a tiki cocktail out there. I think it's just called the Lava Flow. It's actually called the Lava Flow, where it basically combines a pina colada, which has a nice white and like kind of lightish yellowish color to it. And it has some strawberry puree in there and you pour it down the side and it almost kind of looks like lava running across white sand. Well, this one over here, if all goes according to plan, is going to look like what I described earlier. Kind of like a Lava Flow, kind of with the black sand and uh, some various color things going on there. I had to go to the store today. My couple of things. I don't think I've ever had mangoes on stream before. But we've got mangoes because part of this recipe calls for some mango puree and some strawberry puree and other things put up into a blender. So the blender, aka Hamilton, is getting a little bit of use this uh, this part of the show as we start things off in the beginning. And it should be kind of fun, as I say, really overconfidently juggling these two mangoes. It's really not that difficult, I guess. But alas, hand-eye coordination be damned. Here we go. So what I'm gonna need for this cocktail is the following. We need to combine everything into a blender. Everything first. There are basically three things that we need to do. We need to create some mango puree. We need to create some strawberry puree. And we have to blend the rest of it to make it look like this, this cool like little dark sand thing. The ingredients here call for utilizing black food dye. And to be honest, when I went to my Whole Foods today, I couldn't find black food dye. I have a variety of different colors of food dye and I tried mixing them all together the other day, but it came out kind of like brownish. So I figured what was the next best thing to get from the store? At a place like Whole Foods, I went to the supplement section and I was like, y'all got any charcoal? And so apparently they just like sell activated charcoal like by the, uh, <laughs> by the little tub full here. Two scoops per day of activated charcoal will give you digestive aid and promotes the absorption of intestinal gas, which I feel like would be very useful for me. I'm a very refluxy type person, so uh, if the, the absorbing of the intestinal gas would probably be very, very beneficial to me in particular, just in case some of these other cocktails later, which they do, have some sourness in them and citrusiness. So let's get things started over here, shall we? I'm gonna grab our blender. Blender, come over here. We put things into the blender and do things with them. I think it's best to tackle things like this. We're gonna make the mango puree first because it's gonna get it all nice and yellowish. Then we're gonna put the strawberry puree in there. We're just gonna use the same old blender over here. It's gonna absorb some of that color. Uh, and then we're gonna do the base of the cocktail. So I kind of split things off into a little couple of pieces over here. Um, I'm gonna go get a couple of containers for myself just so we have a place to keep the strawberry and mango puree. I've got two whole mangoes over here. I literally have no idea how many ounces of mango puree that is going to create. So we're just gonna take it. We're gonna go by it by here and kind of see what happens. Now we actually need more containers. So I just kind of went off to grab all of them. I got all the containers now. I don't know exactly how much strawberry puree and whatnot we'll have left over. We'll see. I'll also note too, I'm wearing a whole, I'm wearing a whole cloak for this thing. So uh, I'm tripping over my charging wire because my phone is very much out of battery today. Put these things on the ground. We don't need these guys yet. So first off, mango puree. We're gonna make some mango puree. How do we do mango puree? Well, I'm glad you asked. We're gonna take these mangoes, I'm gonna peel them, I'm gonna get all the gooey gump out of them, put them into a blender, add a little bit of water in there to get it to the right consistency, and then uh, then we'll be off to the races. That's what it's all about. So, let me get my, I'm gonna put this blender in an opportune location. Let me, let me move you guys, I'm gonna move you guys over there a little bit. I'm gonna move things a little bit. Hamilton, you can hang over here. Good for you, good girl, or something, I don't know. I'm gonna grab myself a peeler. I got peelers over here. I literally just bought new peelers the other day. Oh, excellent. I'll grab, no, that's the zoodler. I don't want the zoodler. I want the peeler peeler. We'll do this guy. I bought new peelers because I was sick and tired of the peelers that I already had. They were all stupid and bad and bleh, ugly. So I got new ones. These ones are probably just as ugly, but they're sharp and it's all about utility around here. Don't, uh, don't eat your stickers or do like if that's your thing, or maybe don't. Actually, don't eat your stickers. I don't know if that's something that I want to encourage, to be perfectly honest. So all I'm doing is I'm just giving these, uh, giving these mangoes a peel. That's all. It's a nice, easy peel here. Starting things off simple. Starting things off great. I've never actually peeled a mango before. I am not a big mango guy. Um, I don't exactly know what it is. 
Um, I also didn't know what I was looking for when I looked for mangoes at the store. I don't exactly know what a ripe mango looks like. They were store. They were selling regular mangoes. They were selling um, other mangoes. Just realized I don't have my bucket up here. I remember. I told myself this morning. The bucket needs to come upstairs, and I saw it because I, I wound up putting it in my uh, my bathroom sink in order for it to dry overnight. And I was like, I should bring that upstairs so I don't forget to bring the bucket up. And I completely forgot to bring the bucket up. So I'm just going to pull all my things over here. And uh, if I find myself running out of space on the bar, I'm going to go for that. But uh, in the meantime, dude, these mangoes are squishy and sticky. Yeah, never peeled a mango before. It's not too bad. It's got a very interesting, it's a very sticky texture. It's almost like I'm not the only person who's felt snot on their fingers before. Definitely not the only person. I was a child once too and continue to be every once in a while. But this kind of feels like snot in my fingers. It smells very tree-like. Very, very fresh mango, I guess. Very interesting there. I should be putting this on a cutting board. Because I have a cutting board. I have a cutting board. I've got a lot of this mango peeled, but not enough of it. I want to peel more. More mango. It's like this, this... The inner inner flesh here is just sticky enough to make it difficult to get to the rest of the mango. I don't even know if I'll need... I, I actually don't think I need any more than a single mango for this cocktail. So I might just go with single mango and then be done with it. We'll see. I'm also definitely not peeling this the way that I'm supposed to be. <laughs> we try our best. We try our best indeed. I've almost got this thing all completely, completely and utterly peeled off here. Tonight there'll be a lot of a lot of waiting games, you know. Could be cooking some bacon, be peeling some mangoes, gonna be I don't know, executing Order sixty six, or um you know destroying some younglings. It's just a thing that we do. When you're a Sith, when you're a Sith like me, you like to do the evil things. You never want to do the right thing. Knowing what the right knowing what the right thing is important. That's why we go to school. We Sith. We study. We study hard to know the difference between right and wrong, and then we choose wrong. We choose power because it's all about power. We choose the wrongdoing for the sake of the balance of the world because it's all about the balance of the force my guy that's what it's all about and in order to have balance you need to have one side and need to have the other so you see we sit there just a natural we just we just need to be in this world there has to be some darkness to the world or else you know how will there ever be balance to the force i don't really know so i see in the inside of my mango there's like a bit of a pit here so i'm gonna hopefully cut this thing down in the middle and have not the pit. Oh, is this a stone for or mango stone fruits? Is there a pit in this thing? I've never opened a mango before. This is great. I think there's something. To, ooh, I think there's something. Come on, get off there, mango. I need to wash my hands off of this. Oh my goodness, this is very, very gushy. I've never stuck my fingers inside of a mango like this before. <laughs> this is a new experience for me. I'm trying my best. You know, maybe I should prepare the blender. I'm gonna like rip flesh off this thing and put it into the blender. That's that's what I should be doing. Eee, top off the blender. There we go. I'm gonna like take my rings off so as to not make a total mess of myself over here. And we'll take, I don't know, mango bits. My my fingers are all in it now, so I'm just I'm just going for it. No, actually, that feels kind of disgust. Oh, this is wack this is wacky. Anybody have any suggestions? Hey Alexa, how do you cut a mango? Place the washed mango on your cutting board stem end down and hold. Place your knife about one quarter inch from the widest center line and cut down to the mango on both sides. Mango on both sides. Slice flesh without breaking the skin. Use a spoon to scoop out slices. Scoop? I should be scooping? Oh, apparently I should be scooping. I didn't realize I was supposed to be scooping here. This is great. Cut the cheeks! Cut the cheeks! Cut the cheeks of the, the mango? There are cheeks of the mango? Listen here. This is my mango. I see not the cheeks on this mango. I don't know what you mean here. I am the Sith Lord. What is my name? Camera, Camera Kin Barwalker. That's me. Darth. Eh, bartender. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't completely fleshed out my backstory to be honest. But you're correct. You're correct, Annie. This is not. This is not an avocado. Not at all. There was almost an avocado on stream today. However, I advised against it. There's just so much fun stuff in store today. So much fun stuff. There is an entire part of this mango that is just difficult to cut. Maybe that's what we mean by the butt cheeks. Cut the flat sides off from the pit in the middle. Hey, 
I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm only doing one mango. I only need a little bit of mango puree. So that's what we're starting with. I definitely did this incorrectly. I'm starting to realize, um, much to the discovery and potentially dismay of myself, that there is a hard cross-section area of the mango that I am now realizing that I probably could have cut through first and not cut through my finger. This thing is so slippery. These mangoes are so slippery. Oh my goodness gracious. This is probably why I never eat mangoes, because if I even had a mango, which I do now, I wouldn't even know what to do with it. I don't even know what to do with myself right now. Please don't cut your finger off. I would never. But if I did cut my finger off, would the show continue? Is that the way of the Sith? I, I don't know. Well, Anakin had his entire arm cut off, right? That's a thing. So like, you know, Camerakin, Camerakin, he could go without a finger. He could totally go without a finger. You can make cocktails with missing fingers. That's a, that's a thing, right? At this point, just be careful with your fingers. Just scrape off the flesh with a spoon and be safe. That's a good idea. Well, I got a lot of flesh already. There we go. Kind of pumpkin-y quality. Pumpkin-y consistently, let you see. Uh, there are some other squelchy parts of this. I'm gonna get some of the squelchy parts off. This is why I did this in the beginning. I thought to myself, what the heck should I do first? And I was like, I should make a total mess in the beginning so we can take the rest of the evening to totally recover from this. And there we are. Um, all right. I could just get a mechanical finger. You're absolutely right. That's what it's all about. We're working within universe here. I love it. Yeah, this thing isn't making an absolute mess of my fingers now. How do my fingers taste though? Mmm. Oh, that is delightful. I love that. I've never had a fresh mango before. This is delightful. I love fresh mango. This is great. Now, I must be honest. I completely forgot the bucket downstairs. So excuse me for a moment as I try to call for help from my dearest because I have a very mangoey hand. Hey, dearest? Dearest? Can I have the bucket from the bathroom? Because I left the bucket in the bathroom and I'm silly because I'm a Sith Lord. I don't think things through. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad I can call upon my droid. She goes by A2N2. What the shit are you talking about? Oh, my lovely servant droid. Thank you for bringing me the bucket. Okay, the bucket is way too far over there. I force pull the bucket close to me. I ain't letting you have this bucket. So bucket powers! Unlimited power! Ah! Wait, don't throw the bucket! Don't throw the bucket! Oh my god, she threw the bucket. <laughs> You had force power. How am I supposed to retain it? You're right. You're right. Oh. I couldn't control the force. I couldn't control the power of the force. I just couldn't do it. I'm gonna put all my mango bits in here. Try not to make a mess. I've mango already made a mess. Bits? I got mango bits. Look at all these mango bits. All of these are mango bits because I didn't have my bucket. Where do we go? Oh, tell her you're gonna hurl. I'm gonna hurl. So she runs. Oh, my apprentice. My beautiful. I'm not gonna hurl. Beautiful friends. Not hurl, dear. Hurl. I'm gonna hurl. As in, hurl into the bucket. Oh my goodness, that's nasty. Why would you hurl over the front of the bar like that? That's crazy, dude. That's what happens when I don't prepare. I I'll admit, this has been a wacky, wacky day. There's been a lot of stuff going on. A lot of things rolling through my brain, including the beautiful cocktail show that you see before you this evening. So if we uh, if we have a little bit of a weird start here, it's just a part of the process. We, we love ourselves for who we are. All right. Mango bits. Mango bits in there. All right. That was wonderful. That was one mango. I don't know how else I'm going to use a mango. I'm going to cut up another mango. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do with this. So what I'll do is first, actually, no, there's no point in washing my hands yet. There's no point because I'm going to be peeling a mango. Now, evidently, well, hold on. Actually, actually, hold on a second. There is a method to this. Maybe I won't be peeling the mango. We're going to do a completely different method, right? Evidently, there are cheeks of this mango. I can feel a hard layer down the side, down the cross section. I'm going to cut down the cross section. Cut the cheeks first, then peel the cheeks. I know not what you mean by the cheeks, but I'm going to cut down the cheeks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope to. This feels pretty cheeky to me. If there was any cheek to be found, this feels cheeky to me. You're saying this is, the flat ovals are the cheeks. Flat ovals, cheeks. This is not flat, this is here. 
You're saying, aha, I am doing this correctly. Chat guided mango cutting. I'm glad that somebody popped in to save me. Save me from the darkness of the force. You know? That's what it's all about, I think. Protecting each other. Protecting, protecting our folks. Protecting our boys in blue and red and otherwise. Just our boys in general. Protecting our, our lovelies too. And everybody in between. You're welcome. And he loves mango. Okay, now what do I do? I, peel, I pull it apart. I'm trying to split it like a mang- like a- like an avocado. Alright. Oh, it's kind of coming loose. It's kind of doing its thing. I can kind of- I can kind of- Do I just pull it apart? Oh, You didn't cut through. I didn't cut through? Wait, is there- Is there a solid layer to this? It's not an avocado. Oh, there's no pit in the middle? Is avocado not a- is mango not a stone fruit? I just need to cut through even more? Ooh. Alexa, do mangoes have seeds? According to an Alexa Ancestors contributor, there's a hard pit in the, in the middle. In the center, a pit, like an avocado, peach, or cherry. Oh, I see. Like an avocado, peach, or cherry. So I need to just I need to just keep on going. I gotta keep on going here. I just need to believe in myself. The power of the fourth be with me. I cut the cheeks around the pit. Cutting the cheeks around the pit. Cutting the cheeks around the pit. If I've done this correctly, it will split open. Like those younglings, right? I, I open, I open mango. I put my fingers between the cheeks and I pull. Well, I mean, things are happening. I can hear sounds. Things are happening. You know what? Oh, I think we got it. Eee. I don't know if I did that correctly. One of these are good. One of these are great. The cheeks are like a third of the width. The pith is the middle third. Well, I definitely see a pit in there. This is, this is pity. <laughs> this is absolute pity. Absolute pity. Now I'm just gonna try to like get all this gunk out of here. I could spoon it out, but I got a knife. Meat. Meet me on the dark side. We have cookies, or so I've been told. Just like, just like get out of here. Oh, I could just peel it. Oh, I'm supposed to peel it now. Huh. Well, lucky for everyone else. I also like, I bought two different colored mangoes. A ripe mango is what color? Pop quiz. You tell me. I have literally no idea. This is my first time buying mangoes. This is very, I, it's not very soft. It's not as soft as the other one is. So, I'll try to get the other end of it out of the way. No, it's all good. It's all good. Because last week, I struggled to get into a coconut, so it just wouldn't be a bar with an extreme without me struggling to open some sort of fruit, vegetable, or other thing from nature. I'm now in the process of just eviscerating it. I'm just peeling, peeling it off the side. Just absolutely going for it. And it's working pretty well. This skin's for the bucket. There we go. This skin is also for the bucket. Excellent! Soft but no squishy is best. Too hard and it's not ripe yet. Oh. Well, apparently I bought an unripe mango. That is very hard. It's all gonna become puree. We'll wind up straining things anyway. There we go. I'll just get around the peel then. Getting around the peel. Around the nope, that feels pretty hard. How about this way? Alright, well, there's a little bit- Yeah, this thing is really hard. Well, well I got all the ripe parts of the mango. The rest of it, not so much. Yeah, this is not even, none of this is squishy anymore. There's a little bit of, little bit of give. If I really stick my finger in there, only a little bit. We're gonna leave this to uh, Jedi Cameron to figure out later. Consumption, dude, I should take a bite of it. Back into the bucket we go. This is for the younglings. That is delightful. This is very tasty. Oh, wow. Did, were there any Sith Lords who ate children? I need to ask that question. This is a very important question. Also, let me wash my hands off for a hot second. This is necessary if we plan on continuing. There we go, there we go. Try not to make a, try not to make a mess of my cloak. A little bit of cleaning. If ever there was a Sith Lord to eat children, 
It's me, Darth Bartender, Darth Cameron. He eats children. Let's see, Vader, Vader what? Vader like father, right? I don't even know where we're going with this. Anyway, we have mango puree. We're gonna make ben a mango puree. That's what this piece of the puzzle is all about. I'll put my rings back on. I'm gonna put these guys over here. The next thing that we're gonna cut is uh, strawberries. <laughs> it's, it's significantly less difficult, at least when you do it my way, which is my way, or the skyway, like the spaceway, because I'll jet you out into space. That'll be where you go, because that's how Darth Cameron rolls, dude. What liquor are you using? There's no liquor in here yet. These are the children. Children are non-alcoholic, you know that. This is just this cocktail's children. Combine in here, we're gonna wind up putting spiced rum. And that's pretty much it. You just need some spiced rum. I got a little bit of Cat and uh, Morgan left somewhere. Let me grab my, grab my, my uh, thingam, thingamajigger that allows me to plug in the blender, which is all the way down there. So I must move it over here. I need a longer extension cord for this bar. Uh, because I can only keep the blender just like precariously over here, <laughs> right in front of the microphone, because I don't have enough space yet. I've been, I've been figuring things out slowly but surely. I should just suck it up and buy another extension cord. Here, can you go in here? Can you be nice and go in here? That'd be really cool if you did. Here we go. I have outlets beneath the bar. You can't see them. It's a little difficult to see, because in case you haven't noticed, I have green contact lenses in. It's to make my eyes do cool things when I put lights up against them like this. Ha ha! Power! It's cool things, actually. It's really, really cool stuff. It's all part of the outfit. Mango puree. I'm gonna add a bit of water to this. It just feels necessary. I'm gonna drown the younglings as well as blend them. Just a little bit. Just to remember, just to give them a little bit of uh, hydration before I absolutely eviscerate them. Mango puree. <laughs> There will actually be a cocktail later that is specifically inspired by the killing of the younglings. Not yet, though. How much does this drink cost? I'm guessing an arm and a leg? At least. That's only if you're getting the discount. Alright, I have a container filled with mango puree. I am going to put this into a container and uh, put it off to the side. This is one ingredient. I am a half hour into the stream and I haven't even made a cocktail yet. That's okay, we're not about speed over here. That's about fun. Oh, that is nice and puree-y. I am so glad that there was enough for that one container. Sweet! Now we need the other puree. Strawberry. Strawberry puree. And for that, you guessed it, we are going to take strawberries and blend them. I'm gonna put this guy off to the side. Somewhere, somewhere, here, right there. Right near the microphone. I don't plan on blending you yet. You'll just stay right there while I cut some strawberries. A significantly easier task, one of them much better well pre uh, pre prepared for. Um, where's my strawberries? Hello, you. Oh, that thing I said about younglings. There are youngin younglings. I do. Not yet. Hold your horses. We can't just go gobbling all the younglings in one go. That just might be the joke for the stream. The whole the whole shtick for the stream might just be like uh, Cam um, Darth Cameron is just a cannibal. Anyway, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take strawberries. I'm going to cut the tips off of them and the bottoms and any nasty bits. I'm just gonna throw them in the blender. So I do my I do my strawberry puree. Yeah. Strawberries. I've actually been doing a lot of uh, strawberry cutting at work recently. Not because that's what I do. I'm not a cook or anything like that. I'm a firmware engineer, to be honest. However, I do this thing in the morning with my buddy who I work with called Bagel Time. And we eat bagels in the morning. And every week, we change up our bagel time. We change up exactly what type of bagel that we're eating. Uh, to begin with, we started off with some of those uh, smoked salmon cream cheese and a, 
and a nice everything bagel. Delicious. Move to the smoked salmon cheese, cheese with, whoa, words, cream cheese, as well as, oh, what was it? We put on, on cinnamon raisin bacon, bagels, and we put capers on them. So it was nice and vinegary. Um, that was that was a little bit that was a veer from the that was a veer from the tasty. It was a little interesting, albeit nice in its own special way. Uh, we've since moved on. I think currently we're on everything bagels and strawberry cream cheese, and we put some strawberries on it as well. Just a nice little working on my garnish game a little bit. So I gotta gotta take it to work with me. Everybody can join in on the fun. My boss is even gonna join us for bagel time on Friday, and I'm so damn excited. It's gonna be great. I need to buy more bagels though. Oh my gosh. Annie may be a drink inspired by your mango younglings. Oh my goodness, with guava and passion fruit rum. No spice from here, but sadly. So the entire recipe here calls for strawberry rum. I'm sorry, strawberry puree, mango puree. You add those two at the end. The rest of the recipe calls for some spice rum, some coconut cream, orange juice, and black food dye. If you have black food dye. If you don't have black food dye, I went to the store and got some activated charcoal. Supposedly it's good for you. So I bought a whole container of it. It's also an excellent coloring agent, so we'll see. Maybe one day we'll just do like a very dark cocktail stream. Every single cocktail is just black. You can't tell any of them apart. They just all look like darkness. I guess some of them will be opaque. Some of them might have some sparkliness in it. You know what? They're just as varied as everything else that's black in the world. There are many different hues to the world. Beautiful, beautiful colors. And who are we to say that they're all the same? That's a metaphor. But also not so much. I love that. Oh, lol, we have none of that fancy stuff. Oh, listen, it's not, it's only, well, I guess it is kind of fancy. I did buy it from Whole Foods. You know, the Whole Foods that we have here in space? It's a thing, I assure you. It's most definitely a thing. Excuse me, I was checking to see that I still had one of my contact lenses in. I think we originally got these for a cosplay I did many, many moons ago. Oh, no, 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 Anna and I bought these for a run that we did. It was a 5K. It was a glow run. And so they set up... Okay, we bought them for the cosplay first, and then we wore them for the 5K eventually later. We were dressed up as the ghosts from Luigi's Mansion, specifically the floating Werlindas, if you're familiar. Anyway, there's like two more strawberries here. Boop, there we go. Pop it on in there. There we go, an empty strawberry container, which will go into, not the bucket, the recycling bin. Aha, I completely missed the recycling bin. That's all right. Bucket for the bucket lords! You know, that's how we do. Oh, I got some extra scraps over here. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, just like your heart. Dark. Darth Cam. It was a glow run, I remember. Evil people don't recycle. I don't. I ne never do. That's why I missed it on purpose. Obviously, it's all about the- it's all about the flavor of tonight's stream. That's what the flavor is all about. You know what I realized? I tried really hard on my makeup today. To look like Camerican Bar Walker, and you know what I realized? The camera that you see here is reversed. And I was looking in a mirror, so my scar is on the wrong side. Shucks. Oh darn it. That's okay. We'll be fine. All right, strawberry puree. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that. I'm gonna move the blender away from the microphone and uh, give folks a warning before I set this thing ablaze again. Strawberry puree. Yet another type of youngling, I suppose. Need things to catch. One second. Give it a little bit of a shake. Gotta get a. Uh, gotta get everybody nice and comfortable with each other before we completely blend them up. Got it. Got it. Need a bit more water in there. Get things going. Need some liquid going. There we go. Just a bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of Sith Lord. Got it. I believe in you. I believe in the force. Force power. Force power. Force power. I would push something in there to try to get them all familiar with each other. However, the last time I put something into a blender, I got uh, wood chunks in my pina colada. There it is. Yeah. End them. I'm evil. <laughs> oh, this looks delightful. Delightfully dark color. Ooh, it's got a nice bubbliness to it. 
This is great. That was awesome. That's a rough buddy. Good job, Zuko. Zuko? Zuko? Fire! Fire dude from that. The Legend of... Nope. <laughs> Avatar, the last airbender. What am I gonna... What can I do with excess strawberry puree? Because I have excess strawberry puree. I can, I can do a bunch with excess strawberry puree. This is a great idea. Oh, I gotta get... Gotta get that. Gotta get that. Yeah, get strawberry puree now. This is awesome. What do I use it for? Who knows, but I have two full containers of it. I did just blend up an entire container of strawberries, so that's just that's just to be just to be had. Now it would have been a really, really great idea if I somehow managed to figure out multiple cocktails that I can use the strawberry puree in and the mango puree. So as we're not doing just one thing. <laughs> but this is what I have. So So I got mango puree and strawberry puree, which are in unlabeled containers, but one of them says painkiller. The mango is the painkiller. No, no, no. The strawberry puree is the painkiller. Put the rest of this strawberry puree away. I will put them all in the fridge in just a hot minute. I don't need the, uh, actually I do need the blender. I need the blender again. I don't know why I put it away. I put it in the bucket. I thought I didn't need it, but I do. I do, I do, I do. Freeze it into cubes, not in a lemonade, would be cool for a lemonade based cocktail so it gets more strawberries. Now that's a great idea. Somebody else, I think it was actually my dearest who said, um, you can just freeze the things and then put them into your drinks later and make some strawberry. It's an excellent idea. I love you people. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to actually create the base of the cocktail, right? We need to add together some spiced rum, some something to turn it dark black, um, coconut cream and some OJ. I'm not, I'm not squeezing my own oranges this time. I don't, I don't want to do it. So uh, just like I'm, I'm evil, right? I'm putting in less effort than normally. Right? That's, that's the whole shtick here. So uh, I'm gonna go for some orange juice that we got laying around over here. That's an OJ. I got some coconut cream as well, somewhere around here. There you are, coconut cream. I'm gonna need to put in a container for that guy too. Good spiced rum. Got these guys. This is coconut cream, right? Coco Lopez. Love this stuff. It's so, coconut cream is so tasty. I need some spiced rum. Where am I spiced rum at? Captain Morgan. This is what we have. This is the rest of the Captain Morgan. We need two and a half ounces of that. I'm just gonna pour the whole bottle in here. Just how it is. We need to blend this stuff with ice. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop the top off Hamilton, our blender, and we're gonna add a couple things together. First, we're gonna need some ice. I'm gonna go grab some ice. What do we got over here? Coco Lopez, the Hispanic in me, is so proud. I love it. It's like the only coconut, actually it's not the only coconut cream that I've seen in the stores recently. This is actually very exciting. There are multiple of them. You know what I'm gonna do to conserve some ice this stream? I'm actually gonna crack some of my big old ice cubes. I'm gonna see if this does anything. We're always trying to work on our technique around here. The technique that I'm going to work on the, the, the first, the first, <laughs> the first thing is to take this ice cube and whack it over top of this, uh, this blender here and make it into pieces. Yep, there's a, way, there's a way to do this. There we go. There we go. Crushed ice. One of the ways. I used to make coquito lo last Christmas. I, I used it to make coquito last Christmas. Oh, nice! Uh, I still have yet to make myself some coquito. But I have the recipe that you shared with me. So eventually, I plan on really going into it. I'm gonna take three... I don't really know how much ice cube I need in there. I don't think I need that much. So I'm just gonna do two big ice cubes, and if we need to thicken it up, we'll just thicken it up more later. Sounds sounds good to you? Sounds good to me. Oh, one of my strainers fell on the ground. I'm gonna put that over here. There we go. So what we need in our glass, in our blender, is about two and a half ounces, or like, what is that? Two is like 59, a half an ounce is like 15, so like, like 100 or so. I don't know. If you got a bottle of spiced rum, just fucking go for it. We're killing younglings over here! <laughs> or, uh, turning to the dark side, I guess. There's nothing left in this bottle, so it gets recycled as well. Or not! Because I'm on the dark side, nobody will ever know what me. We're also gonna need to add two dashes of coconut cream. So, I have containers over here to specifically save all the excess and whatnot, and I don't think any of them are big enough. Uh, because I have this entire container that I'm about to open and just, like, add, apparently, two dashes to. There will be more coconut cream utilized later, I'm pretty sure. So, it's not a, not a total waste. And also, it wouldn't be a total waste anyways because coconut cream is awesome and I would use it for a bunch of things anyways. 
I'm gonna need I'm gonna use one of my one of my spoons to get a couple of a couple of licks out of here. It's interesting. I had this thing completely sealed, um, but it still kind of did a little it did a little separation dance. So I'm just gonna put a big old whoa hello there big old glob of it in there. One dash, two dash. There we go. That's coconut cream. If it's coconut cream enough for you, it's coconut cream enough for me. Oh yeah. I'm gonna get a bit more of the liquid in there. Being evil is not an exact science. Mm. God, I love coconut cream. That's actually not as liquid as I was hoping it to be. So, instead of putting it in its final destination container yet, we'll leave it over here just for a little bit. We'll get to it again later. Or at least we should, hopefully, if everything goes according to plan. Which, everything always goes according to plan around here. So after adding our two dashes of coconut cream, or just like eyeball it, we're gonna add three full ounces or about 90-ish milliliters, right? 90-ish? Yeah, that makes sense. Of, um, oh, that meant the two ounce thing was off. 60 plus the half, it's gonna be like 75-ish. 75-ish on the last one. Three ounces, like 90-ish milliliters of that. I'm actually gonna measure that one out with one of my new measuring majiggers. It just looks like one of the other ones, except it's bigger and it's gray. I also bought myself more shakers. It finally happened. I finally realized that I deserve more. So we did. And we went for it. Oh, and now I need a single ounce on the other side. I think I put a little bit more spice drum in there, so I'm gonna put four ounces of the OJ in there. Like three and a half-ish. Measure things out properly. Now, the other piece of this, the piece that I'm really excited for, is to make it look like black sand. So, according to what I was able to find on the interwebs, you can, if you want to, use black food dye. I don't have black food dye. Instead, because I couldn't find it in the store. So instead, I found me some activated charcoal, which is apparently good for your body, supposedly, in certain amounts. 500 milligrams per serving. It promotes the absorption of intestinal gas. If you're gassy, this stuff's for you. You can also turn your cocktails black. And like, I guess, just darker in general. I have literally no idea how much I'm supposed to add to this, so I'm gonna add more until I feel like it is black enough. Wow, this is complete, whoa. Yo, check this out. It really is as dark as it, it really is dark. It just is. I opened this thing up and I didn't know what I expected to find, but alas, look at this. It is. It's completely black in there. But even, even the little, even the piece here. Even the little pieces of paper are also just like completely stained a dark color. There's even a spoon in there! Oh my goodness. It's good for those who get gassy. Cocktails. Cocktails need to be healthier, right? Yeah, we need to put more stuff in our We need to put more healthy stuff in our cocktails. Oh, that's cool. Even, look at it, look at this. Give a little... Give me a little spoon. Oh, give a little spoon! <laughs> I gave him a tiny little spoon! And I got some charcoal on my bar. It's chill. It's chill. That is so great. OJ is healthy. OJ is healthy. Our, uh, our activated charcoal is apparently healthy. How does this taste? My fingers are now like, I mean, dark. That has absolutely no flavor. It is just texture. All right, where to put my spoon? I need enough to turn this black. So this is what I plan on doing. I'm going to blend the cocktail. I'm gonna blend the, the pieces that I have already and then add enough <laughs> to make it turn a dark color. That's supposed to look like, like lava sand or whatever. So incoming more sound effects. I'm gonna get this thing all blended up first. Observe. I think we need more ice in there. That has a whoa, that has a really excellent color to it. Check this out. Or a cool little pattern thing to it. I don't know if y'all can see that. Oh my god. Wait, wait, let me blend it again. I don't know if you can see this. Check it out. That has got a really cool, like lusterish effect going on right now, and I didn't even add any dust to it. I don't know what's causing that. Oh, it might be the pulp from the orange juice, maybe. That's cool. That's cool. I think I need more ice in this. I'm gonna get some more ice. I'm gonna go for some of my smaller cubes this time. Some smaller cubes in there. 
Uh, excuse me, ma'am. <gasps> oh no! Oh, get in there. Yep. Uno, dos, tres y cuatro. Tres, cinco, no, cuatro. I try to count sometimes. It, it sometimes works. When do you strain it? You don't. Nothing gets strained in this one. You don't strain lava. That's silly. Blending sound. There's a lot of, lot of, liquid, lot of sounds in there. It's thick, yo. Very thick. I think it actually needs more ice. I think it actually needs more ice. Interesting. Cause like to me, to me this is not thick enough yet. I need to have like a nice thick consistency for this to work. At least I think I do. So I'm gonna add more ice to it. Let's do, let's do, I wanna do some of the bigger ones again. Oh, don't fall. Oh, please don't fall. You are for another cocktail and I cannot have you breaking. Not on me, don't break on me yet, dude. Dude, somebody out there, you know who you are, gave me an excellent idea for something involving a Death Star. We're delivering. We are delivering later. It'll be great. All right. Get some more big old cubes in there. That was good. Oh my God, that totally worked. I mean, I still got a bit of ice everywhere, but you know what, it's chill. Oh yeah, you know who you are. This is gonna be awesome. I, I was really looking forward to this stream. I stayed up late last night doing some thinking. There we go. Put some more ice in there. All right. Put my blender top back on. There we go. Blender top back in. Put that on there. Put our ass away. Put it back on. What's a snowy planet? Alderaan has some snow on it, right? There's gotta be a better snowy planet on it. It's Hoth. Hoth is a snow planet, I believe. For chance? Very excited, says Annie. Oh, you should be. This is great. Hoth. shake real quick oh yeah that is a that is the consistency i'm looking for right now this looks like somebody blended up like an orange creamsicle all right now i'm gonna add activated charcoal to this until it turns a preferred color of black i'll start with two heaping spoonfuls of the tiny spoon they gave and see what happens. Observe the color of the blender change, maybe? Yep. That works. Wow. That worked excellently. It's completely darkened. Wow. I did not test this ahead of time. That's great. I got some black stuff all over my hands, but we're good. It's for a cocktail, so it's all good. Oh my goodness, it's a good thing I'm wearing a black cloak too. All right, you go over here. We'll deal with you later. I've completely run out of water, so allow me to fill myself up real quick. <laughs> Don't know why I did that. All right, finally, after almost an hour of not shutting up, we have all the ingredients we need to create a Mustafar lava flow. We've got our mango puree, got our strawberry puree, and we've got the base cocktail here. Now all we need to do is we gotta put them all together. So, without further ado, Mustafar Lava Flow. Allow me to grab myself a nice glass. This is gonna go in a tall glass. Tall glass that you've got space for. We wanna be able to see the effect that we're about to create here. So, let me get one that's nice, tall, and clear. I've got this nice Holland's glass over here, which I think is gonna do just nicely. And now, let's switch the angle. Let's see what we can get. There we go. All right, bring this guy down here, do a little zoop, zoop. There we go, how's that, how's that looking? That is 
I like that. We'll put you a little bit back here. We can watch as the magic happens. Do these components have different densities by chance? So not, not lately, they kind of do, right? They do a little bit. However, we're not necessarily taking, well, we are technically taking advantage of that. One has a shit ton of ice in it. That's this one. It is going to sink to the bottom. It is not going to want to flow up to the top. We'll see what happens. Or at least I hope we'll see what happens. We got a nice sludge going in there. All of our sandy, sandy black sludge. This is very, very thick. This is not coming out very well. There is alcohol in this. Isn't that awesome? We'll fill it almost to the top. Actually got a nice color to it. I'm cool with this so far. Now what we need to do is we need to add a piece of our lava, right? This is a volcano after all. So let's add some lava up on top of it. Hoping not to spill too much, I hope. Now that we've got that lava, let's add a little bit of sheen to it. Make it a little bit more. With our mango puree up on top. There we go. Ooh, dude. I'm gonna do a little bit of finagling. How gonna make it erupt? Is this not an eruption enough for you? I need to, I, I need to take a little bit of my straw over here. I'm gonna do a... The dark colored one. Brown. I need to lick some of this. I need to drink some of this up. I need to siphon some of it. There we go. Hold on a second. No tasting notes yet. No tasting notes just yet. Gotta make it look pretty. All right. Here we go. There we go. I'm gonna push some of this down the side a little bit. To get a more color gradient. There we go. Well, that's kind of going down the side. It's chill. It's chill. Ooh, let me clean that up. It's totally dripping down the side. That tastes awesome. Wow, I like that. Hold up, hold up. Let me just, let me give it a little, little nappy. A little nappy. There we go. That is excellent looking. Our Mustafar Lava Flow. That is so much cooler than I thought it was gonna be. That's awesome. Bar spoon. Let me, put, let me do a little cleanup over here. I put some things away. That is cool. That is really cool. I can't forget to take a picture of that myself. What are we thinking? Nerfed that one drop coming down the side is a total thing. Burns going down. Hey, because it's get it's alcohol. Get it? I did it. I did it. We had alcohol to it. It's pretty cool. I need to take a photo from my side. Because it seems that, I mean, I mean, based off of the other week, my photos pre came out pretty good. It kind of looks like it's very, like, sherberty. Uh, Lil Abe says he totally wants one. I want one. Oh my god. Coming tonight. Every single one of these. Every one of them. I feel like that's a song lyric. That feels like it's a song lyric. Otherwise, I'm still down with it. All right, let me do, I'll put some of my cleanup away. <laughs> There's so much of this left in the blender. We'll take care of it later. The bucket will take care of it later. All the cleanup happens later. For a camera who can put more effort into it, which is not this camera here. All right, so what did, what did we make here? We made a Mustafar lava flow. And that was combining in the, in the black piece of the rum, the black piece of the concoction that we see here, the black sand is made up of some spiced rum, a little bit of coconut cream, OJ, and a bunch of ice. So much ice to give it this, this layered effect that you see before you. The red part of the cocktail, which you can kind of see interstice between the yellow parts, there's a little bit of yellow part there. The red part is just strawberry puree. Took some strawberries and we pureed them all together. And then the yellow part is some mango puree. We took some mangoes and guess what we did? You're right, we stepped on them. No, just kidding. In a blender, we stepped on them, metaphorically speaking. At the bottom, what you taste, it's very light. It's very, very light. It's lightly orangey, lightly coconutty. I actually really like the flavor. This is just a black sand at the bottom, right? This is just a smidge of that. There's, there's not much rum to be tasted there. There's so much dilution here that you wouldn't even worry about it. And I used the entire rest of the bottle of my uh, spiced rum over there. So you weren't really, really expecting anything to be super duper alcoholic tasting. But now, 
as I mix this up a bit, I'm gonna get some of those other flavors in there, those strawberry notes, those mango notes. I'm gonna see what happens if I kind of take from the top over here. You may notice my my uh, straw is a little flimsy. Um, it's because it's a uh, it's silicon. <laughs> Mmm. Well, that's great. So, the bulk of the sweet... So, it's a very, very light taste when you drink straight from the black sand at the bottom upwards. Very, very light, very watered down. But as soon as you mix in the strawberry puree, the mango puree, those two flavors just, like, come right at you. It is very, very strawberry you now. With still a little bit of that citrusy from the orange juice and a little bit from the cream the coconut cream of coconut that was still in there the mango too also has a very very nice flavor here i've never had mango in a cocktail before at least not one that i've made here so this is refreshing for me honestly this could be totally changed around for whatever your flavor preferences are by just adding more mango puree adding more strawberry puree as you drink your way through it you add some more of that stuff together add some more spiced rum whatever you want it to be it could probably have been any other type of rum because i really don't taste it very much in here this is very very watered down that's good and it looks pretty too. <laughs> notes this, notes that. Just play the song already. Your tasting description is making me want one so bad. Dude, it's so good. Oh my gosh. The only song that I can think of is like the da 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 What's that? What's that line that he says? You were supposed to. What was it? Destroy the synth, not join them. Oh, but I did. I did indeed. Dude, look at the. I just. Whoa, that was so cool. This awesome effect that I get when I put the lightsaber right up against my eyes because I have my contacts in. This is so freaking cool. Oh, Anna, what's up? Yo, you want to taste it? Halt! Who goes there? So, are you with the force or otherwise? It tastes like rum. It tastes like rum. What types of rum? What are your tasting well, it notes? It tastes like watered down rum. Yeah, it's a little watered down. You want to put some of the strawberry puree in there? The mango puree? I like the fight strawberry. of the century. The Wait, strawberry. How do I mix it? You just kind of mix it. You do that thing. You want to share the audience? You're completely upstaging the, the drink. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. I have the other angle. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Wishing I could redeem the sing for us. Too many points. What do you got? What do you got? What are your tasting notes? It tastes Anna. better with the fruit because the fruit kind of takes over the power of the taste. Yeah, pretty good. It does taste kind of watered down. Yeah, well, I think the uh, the base part of it is very watered down. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. A fan? Would you would you have would you it have another? It doesn't taste like rum. Now that you mix in everything else, it tastes more like water. Yeah, I think it's it's one of those things because of the different densities and stuff. There's a lot to unpack, and you can mix it all together for a different drink. How basically, much, how much ice did you put in? A lot, like four. That's probably whole cubes. why it tastes a lot more like water. I kind of like that though, to be honest. Okay, I think it's kind of nice. All right. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. All right. Break. Like juices. How to hold a break. Hey, what's up, Disney Queen? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello, bye bye. Hello, bye bye. I put my. I wrote my sleeves. Dude, that's one cocktail so far. Dude, that's the thing. I get so into these cocktails that sometimes we don't even make it to the end. It's incredible. Who knew A2D2, A2N2 droids like cocktails? Dude, they like cocktails just as much as the rest of us. This basically looks like motor oil, so like it just it goes down the same way. Just a little bit differently. So that was our first cocktail of the evening. It certainly doesn't look as good as it did when we first make it. It's it's a it's a for show cocktail for the most part. I'll put my oh I gotta grab a coaster from behind Pikachu's butt. We'll chomp at you over here. Wants to be a part of the party. There we go. We'll pop that off to the side over here. That was our first drink. Now we gotta move on to another one. I had to do a little bit of cleanup over here. I made a little bit of a mess. This was probably one of the more messy cocktails that we were gonna get into this evening. Uh, let's move on to the next messy, messy cocktail. I, I already have in mind, I already know, know exactly what I wanna go next. Some of the, I, I'll admit, there are a couple of cocktails this evening that I am super duper pumped for. And if I had to, if I had to think about it, thinking about it now, there are five drinks that I definitely, definitely want to cover. I will not, I will not stop this stream until we are through at least those five drinks. This one's one of them. 
I really, really wanted to try this. And so now we're here. <laughs> so now we'll move on to another cocktail, a completely different cocktail, one from a completely different planet entirely. Let me do a little bit of cleanup and we'll go towards it. I'm gonna flip to it, it'll be great. All right, sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, let me do a little cleanup and I'll get right into it. This one is from a planet called Tatooine. It's from a piece of Tatooine that you may not be expecting. Let's have a little bit of a test. Not that I would be able to correct you. What can you find on Tatooine? Sand, right? A lot of sand on Tatooine. What else can you find on Tatooine? I don't know. I think they, did they have the pod races on Tatooine? Dude, a buddy of mine has that Star Wars pod racing game and it's awesome. It is really cool. So, something about like, like riding around at speeds of up to like 400, 500 like miles per hour or something is pretty, it's pretty cool. Pretty exciting. So this next cocktail comes from a planet called Tatooine. Not really. I mean, technically it does. It came from somebody inspired by the planet of Tatooine, although it didn't actually come from that, uh, the person didn't come from that planet. This one is from a book that I have over here called The Geeky Bartender by Cassandra Reader, AKA The Geeky Chef. This cocktail book shows up every once in a while. I love this thing. This was one of my first cocktail books that I found, and it was because somebody pointed it out on the internet. So one of our community members, I think, put, it, put a picture of it in chat. Uh, in, in our discord and I was like I have to find this book and lo and behold I found I think the second edition at the store as I was walking around a mall that day I was like this is awesome dude. I found it and it's got so many good cocktails in it This one in particular is called Ardiz, aka Jawa juice and we'll be getting into that in a brief moment I realized my bar is a little wet. So let me do a quick wipe down By the way if I am sniffling more than usual it's because um, these contacts are a little, a little painful. They're just large. Like the the contact holes themselves are not as they're they're not as big as my pupils are. So everything that I see, everything has like a glow of green around it. My entire peripheral vision is all green. And it's just kind of a, it's a little disoriented. But I had to do it at least once. Arby's, not Arby's. Arby's, AKA Jawa juice. All right. So here's a snippet from the Geeky Chef about Arby's, AKA Jawa juice. For a desolate desert planet, Tatooine produces a lot of good things. Valuable ores, Bantha milk, Skywalkers. Another fantastic Tatooine export is Jawa juice, also known as Ardiz. I know the nickname, says the geeky chef, because, uh, wait a minute. I know the nickname Jawa juice is somewhat alarming. The good news is that Ardiz is made by, made by Jawas and not from the Jawas. The bad news is that it's also made from mashed bamba hides and fermented grains. The latter isn't so bad. Fermented grains are like the basis of many things like beer. However, bantha hides are, well, like, perhaps not the most appetizing ingredients. If I had to imagine a taste, I'd say they would taste smoky. The tasty draft combines two kinds of fermented grain alcohols, some citrus, pashad's bitters, spiced maple syrup, with a finish of bacon-infused ale for protein. And that's where we're getting our cocktail from this time, the Jawa juice. So a piece of this cocktail is, is chilled bacon ale. And to be honest, when I saw a chilled bacon ale, I didn't really know what to expect from it. I, I don't know where to find bacon ale specifically. I thought about a bacon flavored soda that I've definitely seen at a store before, but I wasn't about to go, I, I didn't know where to go for it. And certainly not the day of slash day before the cocktail stream itself. So I had a better idea, a much cooler idea. At the very, very bottom, in the instructions section, it says that what you can do is you can make bacon infused ale. So, I raise you this point. We can totally infuse a golden ale with, with, go for the other ingredient, go for the other ingredient. Man, I'm super sniffly. Bacon. I'm gonna make some bacon. I also need to get a handkerchief because my, my nose is very, there we go. 
Despite the fact that we're a Sith Lord, we like to conduct ourselves appropriately. That's why I have handkerchiefs. There we go. It's either that or snot rocketing into the drinks. And I'm, uh, I'm not about doing that. I put this thing, put this thing right down here. I am so ready for this bacon, dude. I have been ready for this bacon all day. I was like, I am so looking forward to this. It's gonna be great. We're gonna make some bacon. The idea is this. I love my bacon crispy. I like my beers also kind of crispy. So my plan is this. I'm gonna take, we're gonna make the bacon infused ale first by making up some bacon, kind of crush and just putting it into a shaker. I'm gonna put it into the shaker with everything else. Instead of bacon ale, we're gonna mix the cocktail as normal. We're gonna put in the ale as normal and we're also gonna put some bacon bits in it. And we're also gonna completely double strain the shit out of that thing so like none of those bits are still in there. It's not supposed to be a crunchy cocktail. At least I don't think it is. We'll get there, but first we need bacon. So alas, I will put this thing in, plug it in. We'll cook up some bacon. And um, I just realized I don't have any, uh, I don't have any uh, grease up here. I guess I really don't need grease. Dude, it's so difficult to plug things in down here. You have no idea. Also because I can barely see, because my peripherals, come on, you got it, bud. This is taking a hot moment. Please excuse me. Get in there. You got it. Oh, that'll flip in the other direction. That's fine. Okay, how about how about this direction? Why are you working this way but not working the other way? I'm an engineer, goddammit! <laughs> why am I why am I struggling with this? This electrical engineer can't even seem to, to plug in a, a an induction cooker. Like, who am I really? I was always meant to be a Sith Lord. This is incredible. Oh my god. Are the bacon strips going to be like pickles in the alcohol? Making bacon. Making bantha bacon. Making bacon, making bantha bacon. Yeah, this is ba uh, this is bantha bacon. Um, specifically double smoked, uncured bantha bacon from Nemon Ranch. Not like ranch dressing, I guess. I don't really know. Let's heat this thing up, right? Love that. Rich says perhaps a bacon crumb rim. Not for this one. It's not about the bacon rim. Not for this one. I don't know if the Jawas are into that function, but that is a very valid idea. It definitely uh, there will. By my hand, I decree, at some point, there will definitely be a bacon-rimmed cocktail. There has to be. There has to be. Like, there's, there's no way that there wouldn't be. All right. Oh, really? Oh, is this not the correct container? Oh, no, this isn't the correct pan for this. Anna said she told me. I had a metal pan somewhere around here, and I don't know where I put it. Oh my god. Wow. Alright, hush up. Use one of the stainless steel ones. Use one of the stainless steel ones? But it's a pot, isn't it? This is still stainless steel. Yeah, but like, that's not the pan. I had a pan around here that was perfect for this thing, and I don't know where it went. I completely lost it. So we're gonna use this instead. We always got a backup around here. Thank you, dears. That's perfect. This one's my favorite. Yeah, I thought maybe it would work. These induction cookers are very particular. If you don't have exactly the right thing on it, it'll be like, nope. No, no. No, 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 no. So that's what it was doing. Bacon rim or we riot? Maple flavored cocktail with bacon rim. Maple flavored cocktail. Oh, I mean, what does this have maple in it? It's got maple syrup. We'll put a bacon rim on it. Why not? We'll put a bacon rim on it. Or else the people will riot. We don't want the people to riot. Certainly not. I want the people to riot. I don't want the people to riot. I think we should riot. No, 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 no. I don't think we should riot at all. I don't think we should riot in the least bit. Do you want some bacon? Yeah. I hope I hope I can make enough bacon for the whole crowd. Anybody else want bacon? 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 It's also bacon. Want mine slightly undercooked. Anna wants her bacon slightly undercooked. I'm trying to open up my bacon. I almost got it. Almost. This thing is getting hot already. I'm there we go. Supervise you making my bacon. Oh, Anna's gonna sit by and supervise. Let me just stand here. There right. we go. Anna's gonna stand back here as we watch. Okay. Save me a strip, please. Yeah? Yeah? Hit me. Alright, bacon time. Bacon time, bacon time, bacon time. Oh my god, it's already getting hot. I need to pull this bacon off real, real nicely, like. Trying to, trying to, dude. This is why I'm supervising. There we go. Bacon time, put it in there. There we go. I don't have a, oh, I need a thing to push it with. I'm not, dude, it was a, dude, it's been, a, all fairness. It's been a very tough week so far, and this thing is completely smoking. Hold on. I have no idea. I can't see the screen. <laughs> Hush up. I just need anything, really. Okay. 
And I just kind of push it around a little bit. It makes its own fat, you know? <laughs> it's like the fires and lavas of Mustafar in here. And you get in there. Ooh, baby. Oh, dear, dear is me. Anna's getting me a wooden spoon. Dude, it smells amazing in here. I'm gonna get this all nice and crispy. That's what it's all about. Dearest, you were the best. Actually, would you mind supervising from the front to see what number is on the screen? Because I feel like I cranked it up to a nine immediately. All right, you got anything but the wooden one. You said it didn't Anything matter. worked. Hey, Ken, did you get to see episode six in theaters? I did not, not the most recent one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you place, I put it on. Okay. What number does it say? Six. Okay, please turn it down to like a three. There we go. There we go. Three's gonna be just fine. I think it's a, now, I now we get to make some bacon. Maybe? I don't know. I've literally never cooked bacon on an induction cooker before, so this is new. We're all about trying new things this on the stream. This is why I had a supervisor, so I don't burn the house down. That, there we go. No, get in there. Make sure that he cooks my bacon right. It's Naturally. Okay. Well, you tell me. Oh, do we have any plates left on the table? No. That's okay. We have the pan, right? You're gonna use my pan? Yep, we're gonna use the pan. Okay. What we have? Yeah. Make some bacon. Oh, I should put the other cocktail angle on this. Oh. You tell me when it's good. I don't know yet. Wait, are we making mine first? Yeah, making yours first. Oh. Yeah, that's the nice thing to do. Yeah, but the edges are burnt. Well, I mean, what would you like me to do? I want a second piece put in there. Second piece? Another piece? Yeah! Here we go. Bacon! Piece. Put it in there. Bacon time, bacon time, bacon, bacon, bacon time. Let's get the cocktail logo angle over here. Jawaji. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Alright, let's see if this works. Making ba bacon, making bacon, bantha bacon. That seems weird. Hold on, upside out. There we go. There we go. Making bacon, making bantha bacon. I'm making bacon, making bantha bacon. Let's turn this up a little bit. This is all an experience. Everything we do here is an experience. Do you guys like the ASMR of sizzling bacon? Sizzling, sizzling bacon, my guy. This is what Anakin's face sounded like once upon a time. That's horrible. No, it's not. He was a dark. He's a, on the dark Probably side. Probably a lot more screaming. Yeah, but you shouldn't wish ill on other people. That's oh, true. he's just a fictional character. Come on. Cameron, they're totally real. No, they're not. Yes, it is. No, it's not real. Though. Your eyes still dying. My eyes are still kind of hurting from the contact. To be fair. You should really take them off. Nah, I'm still good. Oh my, oh, my goodness. Somebody gonna be walking by in the hallway and be like, "What the hell is this guy doing in there?" That's what I feel making like. Making bacon, I'm making bantha bacon. I'm making bacon. I put some bantha in, I make it into bacon. Did you know this is gluten free? Is it really? There's no wheats inside of my bacon? No. Kinda makes sense actually. This takes a while. It does take a while. I guess I have to turn it up a little bit. Well, oh. then you'll put it on five. And we were just at like six. I think we're on four, actually. No, oh. I think I just need to keep it moving around. No, because you started at three, and then you turned it up once, and that would make it four, and now we're at five, because you turned it up again. All right. You I mean, to be fair, this is not the right pan for this. Well, I wanted, I, what? All right, are any, is any of this bacon? How's this bacon looking to you? Still need some more? Gluten-free is like non-GMO, gluten-free bacon. It's really just to catch the people that don't notice things. Yo, my friend, Chef Raz, and welcome! We're making bacon! It's bantha bacon, specifically, for Star Wars. That's what it's all about, right? Star Wars? Not the Clone Wars, just the Star Wars Wars. I've got my dearest over here who has cooked many, many more bacons than I. Help me out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think, Jedi Master? Are you a Jedi? Oh no, you're my droid. How burnt do you want yours? I want it crispy, 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 crispy. So crispy that I can put it in a cocktail shaker. <laughs> you're getting close then. All right, I will need one crispy bacon, at least one or two crispy bacon for the rim. And then the other like mildly cooked bacon for the rest of it. I'm just gonna shake it on up. We're trying to make bacon infused ale inside of the cocktail shaker. Well, we should probably put multiple bacons in at once. More bacons in at once? 
More bacons in at once. Woo! Thank you, dear. I smart. More bacon. This is so good. I'm completely smoking this place up. Oh my god, my cocktails are making everything starburst. What is wild? I think my my I'm sorry, cocktails, contacts. I think my contacts are fogging up. This is awesome. Hopefully I don't set up the smoke alarm. Okay, Cameron, I charred the bacon. Perfect. Pop. There we go. That's one charred bacon. Alright, what else? What else we got? Let's put in another one. How many do you want? I like two or three pieces. Okay, so this is fine. That one is fine, and then we'll do it with the other ones. Well, one of those is mine. Okay, well, you tell me. Do you want two or three? Three. Three. Three, three bacon, please. Then you need one more. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Should I go open a window or something? Uh, that might be a good idea. Where should I open the window? I'm Where not sure. Go? What would you like me to do with the bacon? Do you want me to go open the window? Yeah, maybe you should. Oh, oh no, I burnt mine. Oh, no. Now I got more bacon. That one's yours now. I'm going to go open the window. <laughs> Yeah, you should do that. Here we go. Hey, y'all. How you doing? Gluten free. Yep. Yeah, that's smart. It won't lay flat. Uh, pro tip, cook bacon at 350 degrees oven sheet pan. Line My dad does that. Was that chef? Was that chef? Yeah, chef. Yeah. yeah. Somebody in here with actual cooking knowledge. My dad will do that. I love that. Yo, and Dom just showed up. What's going on? What are we making? We've got Arby's. It's Jawa juice. And we're making bacon. All right, this one's going to be mine. This I just need epic. to give it an extra five seconds on this side. Ooh. And we can even save the fat for the recipe? Dude, right on, man. How do you make that meat wash food thing? Meat wash food? Don't you make meat wash cocktails? Fat wash? Is that a thing? It's a thing, yeah. Do you use bacon grease? You can totally use bacon or the grease as well. Well, why would I use the bacon? I mean, if, you know, it's whatever you want to do, really. All right, I think this one is mine because it is slightly undercooked, but it still has cookage. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Wait, uh, yeah, you know your pre flavor preferences best, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you have. This it. is like the only meat that I have undercooked. Honestly, I kind of feel honored that apparently I was making the bacon so destructively, so Sith Lordly, that I think you worried for me and came up to correct me. No, I just wanted bacon. That's fair. That's also fair. <laughs> that was actually why. This is second cocktail of their evening. Chef Raz is totally stoked to see what happens. And we got our bacon rim at the end. The bacon rim is not a part of the original recipe, but this is our show, so we can do whatever we want to. This one's fine. Okay, Anna's got that one. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. I hide it off to the side. Great. Great. And I think that last one was looking pretty good. Oh, I thought you wanted it bone. Oh, burnt. no, that's fine. I think I want one with a little more, oh, then a this little one, less crispy. This one's fatty. Okie dokie. Here, here. Put it over top. Okay. There we go. You need to turn off. All right. Power off. Thank you, lovely. There we go. I get this one. Yeah, Anna gets one of the bacons. Yes. This is our bacon. This is what we got. This is what we got. This is what we got. Are you going to put brown sugar on the bacon? I don't have any brown sugar up here. I got the dem demerara sugar up here, which put it pretty cool. All right, how you feeling? How's this bacon? This bacon doing anything for you? It's hot. Nice. My contact lenses have completely fogged up. This is hilarious. You can't see? I can I can see. Are it's you just blind? Very... No. Okay, good. I've got the hatred flowing through me. I I see everything perfectly well. So it's all in red? It's no, it's not a, it's not in red. It's it's, it's in green? No, it's just kinda cloudy actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, nothing nothing that the doctors should be, should be, you know, concerned about or anything. Oh. Sith Lord. Alright. Uh. You good? Mm -hmm. We're gonna take I'm gonna take this pot, hot pot. I'm gonna put it over on the table. We've got some hot plates over there. Just so as we're not, you know, we're keeping ourselves well over here. Well enough, at least. Okay, okay. You go here. I keep the bacon. I unplug my phone from the wall so I don't potentially trip over everything. That'd be a great idea. Nice job, Kim. Nice job. Then I will unplug Thank our induction you all cooker. Thank me, bacon. It was great. Yeah, Anna. Did you have fun? Did you have fun? 
I eat bacon. I think technically speaking, you're uh, you, you've been a you've been a guest star this this evening. Technically speaking. I'm doing work downstairs. I don't know what you're talking about. Doing work? I don't know. Oh, oh, really? Uh -huh. Is that what's happening over here? Yep. Are you hey, sure you're not giving in to the power? This of the was dark? my bacon break. You don't have cookies, so give in to the power of the dark side. You lied about. Come to the dark side. We have bacon and cocktails and many other disastrously wonderful things. Delicious indeed. Wow, thank you everybody for joining me on that one. And for Anna as well. Wow, this is fun. What did I miss over here? DQ charging the bacon tax. DQ just made n never want to order from them again. Ooh, ooh. That's a hit. That's a hit. There's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of smoke. It's okay, it'll pass every once in a while. Yo, does it look smoky on your screen? No. I can't tell. Everything's smoky to me right now. Are you smoking? This isn't even the smoke cocktails episode. Oh, you gotta do that eventually. Eventually, we will do a smoke cocktails episode. I'm just totally looking forward to Is it. Is another one? Just haven't planned it yet. We played still, right? Oh, we can totally play distilled. We do. We got this board game that's about distilling spirits. I'm hyped. I'm hyped about pretty much everything that happens on this show. Games, cocktails, otherwise. It's a wonderful life that we live. All right, so uh, step one of making Jawa juice. Either get your own bacon-infused ale, or cook up some bacon. Crush up that bacon. Put that bacon in your shaker. There's a whole rest of this cocktail that we have to make, so let's go for it. We need to shake everything together. I'm gonna try to do this rapid style, so as to get things a-moving. First, I'll grab my shaker. There we go, get out of here. There we go. Got this, got my new, bought a new shakers too. <laughs> so I'm not like vying for space inside of the shakers themselves. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. Okay, so what we need to create Jawa juice, aside from some bacon with which to infuse everything with, is some rye whiskey, some maple syrup, which can be spiced or otherwise to taste, uh, and we need some fresh lemon juice, Pichot's bitters, ice cubes, and our chilled bacon ale. So this is how we're gonna do it. We're just gonna combine everything together in our shaker. I'm gonna shake that up. Put it down. We're gonna rim our glass with a little bit of the simple syrup that we have left over. I'm gonna use some simple, some of our spice syrup and a little bit of our maple syrup. Actually, we'll just use do maple syrup on the rib. I don't even why. No, I'm, I don't even why I'm thinking of it otherwise. This is an excellent idea. We will not do anything but that. What's worse? What's been worse this stream so far? Mango or bacon? I felt a little flustered. Actually, with both of them, I'd say I'd say uh, I'd say the bacon so far because we're still experiencing it. But if it tastes good. That's what it's all about, dude. That smells so good. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so tasty. Ah! Don't get distracted by the vices of our world. Or do get distracted by the vices of our world. We are the Sith after all. We're on the dark side. Join me on the dark side, where we have bacon. Okay, so we need it in our glass. First is two ounces of rye whiskey. My favorite and probably only rye whiskey that I've had, at least in a recent amount of time, is Rittenhouse Rye, which is way, way at the back of the bar. Way, 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 way at the bar. There we go. Oh, don't fall. Thank goodness you did not. Rittenhouse Rye. Bottled in bond, as it is particularly. We're gonna add two whole ounces of that to our cocktail shaker. I put things into the small side, and I let the ice cool in the not-so-small side. Uh, there's no ice in there yet. I was just talking, uh, like, preemptively, because that's what we're gonna do. Two fluid ounces, about 60 milliliters of our rye whiskey on one hand. Then we're gonna add three to four teaspoons of spiced maple syrup. I just bought my maple syrup. I didn't spice it ahead of time. I'm gonna take our maple syrup, I'm gonna put some spiced simple syrup, and I'll put them together. That's just how we're gonna do it. I need my handkerchief again. Where my handkerchief at? There we go. And my maple syrup is right over here. I'm gonna go off screen to get my spice maple syrup. We only really need a little bit of it. Like, what is it, three to four teaspoons? So I'm just gonna take bar spoon. This one, because it's still not, it's not, it's not bad. I'm just gonna put like, I'm gonna put a bar spoon of our maple syrup. Hear that crack? It means it's fresh. One bar spoon of maple. Maybe a heavy bar spoon. Heavy bar spoon of maple. I love maple syrup. There's not a lot of things on the stream that I don't like, love. I love you guys. Just kidding, I'm a Sith Lord. 
Look at my sithiness. Rah! That's weird when you have fog in your eyes. I'm gonna take about a heaping bar spoon of our spice simple syrup, which we made, which I made for the tiki drinks last week. And it's basically just you make simple syrup, you add some cloves, some vanilla, some cinnamon in there. Oh, that's so good. Still a little bit of the maple syrup too. That is gonna taste absolutely freaking delightful. I'm so good at that. Wow. All right. Next, what we're gonna add is a half an ounce of fresh lemon juice. I got lemons. I'm so glad I caught that. I really can't see right now. Split that sucker in half. Grab a citrus shaker. I'm gonna pull about a half an ounce from that. How much is a half an ounce in metric? I'm so glad you asked that. It's not like I forgot or anything. It's like 15 milliliters. And this half of our lemon gave just enough. It's a little, it's a little shy. It's a little shy, but we'll let her have it. Bucket. There we go. I don't know if I'm squeezing. Yeah, I'll we'll probably be squeezing more later. I'll probably pop up another squeeze at some point later on. Lemon juice. We'll cap off the maple syrup. It's a tool that we'll be using again later. After we put our lemon juice in there, we're gonna need two to three dashes of Peshaw's bitters. Peshaw's bitters, I once described as tasting like dog. Um, however, now as I've matured a little bit, I I describe them more like a, a grapefruity dog. One, two, three. I'm a bitters heavy kind of guy, so I'm gonna put it all. I'm gonna put it all in there. Excuse me, my handkerchief, myself. These contacts. Oh. May the force be with you, not your allergies. May the allergies not be with you. Not that these are allergies either, it's just kind of how it is. Let me grab some ice, and then we're gonna need to add our ale and our bacon. We'll take two ice cubes, two tiny ice cubes, just whack them on in there. I'll take a large ice cube. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a special ice cube. I'm not gonna say yet what this ice cube is, because it's gonna come back later. But it looks like a sphere. Maybe. Now I'll add one of our bacon bits. I'm gonna do a flop I'm gonna do the floppy bacon bit in there. And I'll put one half of the other bacon bit as well. Give it a nice tear. Yeah, a little, a little more than a tear. There we go. Putting that all in there. Mmm. What are you saying? Shit. Sittler G's. Yeah. I don't even suffer from allergies that much. Just these contacts, man. They really, they really don't like. And we're going to add three, four, three, oh, three fluid ounces of our chilled bacon ale. Now, it says that we're going to add the bacon ale after shaking everything else together. So, we'll get to that. So, we're kind of adding the bacon a little bit before the ale. It's fine. Put some bacon in first. Shake it up. Pour it in the glass. Top it with more ale. Then put more bacon around the rim. Or actually, bacon first on the rim. Then put bacon. Then ale. Got all that? I hope you did. That what, that's what we're gonna do. Mm, bacon says Brad. Oh yeah, hello, welcome. Dom says, I think after I move back to Wisconsin, I'm gonna get prepped to try and make some good meat. Dude, dude, we got a pal out there, uh, Mr. Dead Rats, the bloated, the most bloated of dead rats, who's making some of his own meat, and I'll get to try it a little bit soon. I'm so looking forward to that. All right, let me clear off a little bit of space. Put my bacon off to the side. We'll prepare ourselves with a glass. This one looks like it kind of goes into a hot toddy glass, so I'm gonna prepare uh, something that looks like that. I got, I got this guy. Put that down there. Let's give this a shake. Pour our liquid and bacon ingredients into one side and give this a shake. A lot of prep going into this, a lot of prep going into these cocktails. Good stuff. I can literally hear the bacon, like, breaking apart in there. Oh, this is awesome. Okay. Whew! I'm pumped. Although, Dom says, I'd love to get the blue honey, but that's hard to come by without adding a bunch of food coloring. That's true, that's true. Blue honey, and like blue milk too. Unfortunately, blue milk, I don't think we'll be making an appearance this night. I spent a little too long in these first two cocktails. <laughs> kind of got carried away. Carried away with it. 
So while this guy is doing its thing, we're gonna rim the glass with a bit of maple syrup, and we're gonna put our bacon bits on it. For that, what we're gonna need to do is take our bacon bits and crush them up. Luckily, we've got muddlers on standby. So I'm just gonna like... All right, that's not, that's not very crispy. This is kind of crispy though. There we go, let me... I'm really getting in there. Gotta pull up my sippy sleeves. This one. Maybe it should have been more crispy. I, I, I feel like I should have more crispied this. <laughs> this is an embarrassment. Y'all gotta watch this. If I have to suffer, you do too. <laughs> Here's the thing. Give it a crush. Give it a crush. Yeah, that's right. Bacony bit. There are, you know, there's a, there's a valid number of bits in there. If I do a little bit of this stuff, the circular motion, it's kind, of, it's kind of getting there. This is our, this is my best attempt at bacon bits without completely burning the house down. Uh, I just need a proper pan for that. Knowing that I apparently lost my other pan, I'm just gonna get another one. I feel like what I did was I hid it somewhere close to the stream, close to the bar, so that I could go back to it later easily, and then I just completely forgot where it was. Let me get my knife in over here and like. There's so much, there's so much just on this. Get in there. There we go. It's definitely somewhere I used it this past week to cook food. It's okay. We're, we're both really good at misplacing things. So it's cool. It's cool. That's why we're perfect for each other. All right. So we got bacon. Ba Whoa, don't, don't roll away, muddler. Don't roll away. I'm going to grab myself a little plate. Do some, do some, do some rimming. This is how I rim. There are many ways to rim. But this is how I conduct my jobs. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of our maple syrup. Put it over here. Just enough to kind of cut enough of the plate that it's going to kind of get, get everywhere that we need to. I'm going to go around this way. Run around that way. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Add a little bit more. Why struggle? When with this unlimited power and everything that we want. Everything that we want. Plenty of maple syrup there. I'm gonna lick that up with my face later. We'll kinda take our glass in. Just dip it. I'm gonna do it twice because I don't think I got the whole thing. Just like just get it. Just get it familiar. Get it familiar. There we go. Nice. Now all I gotta do is somehow put the bacon bits on it. So uh this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put this glass, which is now completely. Oh, I re definitely should have gone the other direction. Whoop! It's it's dripping. I'm just gonna go like this. Let's see what happens. Not only is it rimmed with a bit of maple syrup, it's also rimmed with grease. Delicious. Bantha bantha grease. All right. Oh. That did a thing. Was it the thing? I have no freaking clue, but it was a thing. Now I got some bacon for later. I'll adjust my angle in a moment because we'll need to come back to this. All right, just doing a little bit of cleanup back here. I don't want to step on the bacon. I want to eat the bacon. All right, now I'll adjust the angle just a tad. You can get a better view of this. Sorry, that's my floor. Here we go. Here we go. We bacon rimmed it. We did it, y'all. We absolutely did it. It was tough to get here, but we've mastered it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double shake, it. I'm gonna double strain this over top so that I don't get any more bacon bits inside of the cocktail. And for that, I'll use one Hawthorne strainer and one fine strainer. So we're gonna pour that in and then we're gonna top it with our bacon infused ale, which in this case is a golden ale. And it has nothing to do with bacon. Pour all that in, and we'll pop it. Honestly, we might as well go after this bacon too that's in here. Gosh, I'm just gonna eat all this. Don't let me move on to the next cocktail before completely consuming all of this bacon. I'd be sad. Let me get a bottle opener. I know I have one over here. It didn't fall. Yes! Let's crack open a cold one with the Jawas. There we go. And top that 
with an ale. A chilled ale specifically. <laughs> Redeems work that bacon. Classic. Classic. Oh, it totally thumbed over. Man, look at me being so confident. <laughs> it's okay. Better the phone get out now than in my stomach. That would be sad and disappointing. That's why we have this little protector here. Ooh, you're kind of tilted, ain't you? Little, little tilted today. There we go. Now this here beer here, work that body. Are you kidding me? Oh my God, a D1 flexion. I don't remember how to do that. Lower leg across the body. Lower leg across the body. Well, what, then what do I do? Okay, let's just say that I am doing that because I can't remember half these exercises anymore. I'm not cheating, I genuinely don't remember. This is an Allagash Golden Ale. I'm doing my LED one flexions as well to the best of my ability below the bar. You're just gonna have to believe me. Consumption, isn't this great? So the, uh, the uh, it's very, it's very lagery. Not really lagery, it's got a nice earthiness to it. There's definitely some notes of like spices and stuff in there. Which spices, I'm not so sure. Almost a little orangey. <laughs> Cheater, no, 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 no. I would not say that I'm cheating at all. Not at all. These bubbles are whack. Let me pop those bubbles. There we go. We'll go back up to the top with the rest of our ale now that it's had a chance to get to know itself. To be fair, something that advertises Bantha feels like it was going to be a little weird looking anyways. But you know what? We are here. And when you're here, you're family. Olive Garden or something, right? Let me take a quick old pick of this guy. This is a whew, this is a number for this evening. I love that. All right, let's switch back. This is our Jawa juice, our Ardies. Ardies. We have the Bantha bacon. This has been a wonderful stream so far. Thank you all for coming. So what do we have here? This smells like ale. Very, very ale forward. Most of this cocktail is actually just ale just sitting in it. And it's got a nice bubbly texture on the top. I can see bacon bits around the rim. There's maple on it. At least a certain amount of bacon. We, we tried, you know, we tried here. I feel like we probably could have done it one better by actually like taking this ale, letting it sit overnight with a bit of the bacon just to sit in it to really, really get all the infusion aspects. But I wanted to try it this way. Try to do like a fast infusion type thing with all the crushed up bacon bits just to see what would happen. Ooh. What spirit do we add to that? We added the rye to that. We added rye whiskey to that. It's nice. So it's very, it's very forward on that beer. There is a nice, nice, like, grainy note there. I can't describe beer super duper well, so bear with me. There's like, there's something spicy. It's not like a very, very non-spice forward beer. Specifically, it's an Allagash Golden Ale, I believe. And the, like, again, my vocabulary for describing ales is not that thought out. However, there's a like, nice sweetness there coming from the spiced maple syrup, which is just some spiced simple syrup combined with the maple syrup. It's a very light beverage, very light on the sweetness, very light on the full packed on flavors, but there's a slight smokiness there ever so slight that is most definitely coming from probably the bacon bits that are sitting in my mouth as I crunch up a little bit of them but it's pleasant it's kind of like it really does have that maple bacon quality to it and not just because there's actually maple and bacon on the rim of the glass there is a piece of that in the rest of the flavor profile because it is also in my mouth I'm just trying to convince myself that that's not the main flavor that I'm getting here there's other stuff going on here too. Pretty pleasant. I would think it's almost, I would say there's a piece of this that is almost apple juicy. Like it's almost like somebody took a little bit of maple syrup and added this to apple juice. That's what I think the beer has become more of a flavor of. Kind of apple-y, juicy, cidery. And that's not what I tasted when I drank out of the bottle. It definitely did not taste like cider to me. But combined with everything together, remember we had we had some maple syrup in here, had some lemon juice in there, had some Peshad's bitters in there. There's a little bit of a bitterness there. I think mostly the bitterness is coming from the beer. Not much from the Peshad's there. But um, if I take a if I take a sniff of the Peshad's, 
Still kind of smells like dog food. Still kind of tastes like bacon. All around. This reminds me a lot of like, I haven't had too many beer cocktails in my life, but one in particular I think combines amaretto and orange juice together. It's called Edna's Lunchbox. It's delicious. And like when you take a beer and you add a bit of juice to it and you add a bit of like sweet liqueur to it, which I know we technically didn't do here. We just added some maple syrup. It's just, it always tastes nice to me at least. I think that's just a flavor combination that I really, really like. The bubbliness and graininess of the beer combined with the sweetness of some fruit juice combined with something else that provides the rest of that sweetness. You get amaretto or like maple syrup in this case. It's great. I love it. Dom says, is it cheating if you still get what you want? I, as the Sith Lord that stands before you, dear Camerican Barwalker, would say no. I don't think it's cheating at all. Or maybe in my Sithy way, yes, it is still cheating, and I got exactly what I wanted. And what did I want here? Cocktails and bacon. Mm. Take the strainer. Wow. So much of this strainer has been completely used to get all those bacon bits. That's delightful. Kind of disgusting. But delightful nonetheless. I'm throwing everything in the bucket. Excuse the loud sound effects. Oh, there's bacon in there! Huh. A moment, please. Check this out. If I have to suffer, so should you. Hmm. <laughs> this is our wet cocktail bacon. <laughs> Oh my god, that's lemony! Wow! That tastes like lemon! My goodness gracious! I gotta taste that! It's not bad at all. This tastes like more of what I wanted the cocktail to taste like than the cocktail I actually tasted! This is amazing! This is like the cocktail itself with the rest of the bacon. This is delicious. Oh my God. Mmm. That is simple. My God. I can taste the rye whiskey. I can taste the lemon juice. I can taste the maple. I can taste the bacon. I really can't taste the ale because I didn't put ale in this part of it. That's amazing. I love that. God. The bar with the next is now a cooking show. I'm never making a cocktail again. Actually, I will make multiple cocktails. However, I will splash them bacon. I will put the bacon into the cocktail. Mmm, I love that. That is a really weird texture. The squishy... I've never had something that was squishy and kind of tasted like whiskey. And I've got that rye spice too. That is just great. Get it? Rye whiskey? Spice? Like Dune? Dune? Desert Planet? Tatooine? It's all connected. Anyway, time to eat the rest of this bacon. And then we'll move on. There's three more cocktails I want to do. Maybe more. We'll get it. We'll get there. That will go. <clears throat> That's so good. Wow. That was incredible. Hmm. Wowie, wowie, wow. Don't let Cameron make bacon on stream again. I'll burn the house down and I'll just get distracted and eat more bacon. Whiskey infused gummy bears? Ugh, Annie, do not tempt me. Three more, says time. Three more? We're already almost at the two-hour mark, and I have more cocktails? Dude, I have eight prepared for this evening. I don't think we'll get through all of them, but I want to. We'll see. We will see. Dude, multiple consumption requests there. All of it. Oh, thank you. I need to wash this down or I'll choke, so please hold a moment. Actually, let me do some cleanup. We'll do some cleanup. I'm gonna chew the rest of this bacon. We'll move on to the next cocktail. This one... 
A bar with an X original. Okay. Did not think that I was going to be so enthused, so blessed by the bacon lords today. My god. To all Sith lords and bacon lords, praise be. I'll kill younglings for that. You should also break at some point to remove the contacts. I might. I don't know if I should continue with these cocktails. Uh, whoa, contacts. I keep mixing up cocktail and contact. They just sound similar. Where my, um, where is my handkerchief? I might do that. Maybe I'll have Anna come back up here before she goes to bed to uh, entertain the crowd as I remove my contacts begrudgingly. Anakin killed younglings for less. It's true. It's true. So what do we made? We made Artie's Jawa juice. Let me put that off to the side. Put you over here. So, so far, the Mustafar Lava Flow is so cool looking. Tasted pretty good. Jawa Juice, the by the byproducts of the cocktail, I feel like are the most enjoyable parts of the cocktail. Although, although, I'll give it another chance. It's a nice, it's a nice sweeter beer now. That's very pleasant. That's very, very pleasant. Okay, so we'll move on to another cocktail this evening. Which one in particular? We'll figure that out in a moment. There's one, there's two. Was that all of them? One, two. Oh, there were two. Yeah, okay, this is what we'll do now. This next one is inspired by some community members who gave me some ideas. I thought to myself for a little while, somebody had mentioned the balance of the force. And I was like, yeah, the balance of the force, that sounds cool. How do you do that? And they give a really nice idea about the density of cocktails. We see the density of, we did some layered, I think we did like a layered shot last week or the one before, where you can get these really cool layers that stack on top of each other. And I feel like you can't have layered shots and Star Wars and not have some fighting force between like the, the, the dark side and the light side, the dark and light, I don't remember what you call the light side, the Jedi's and the Sith, you know? So uh, this one's called The Balance of the Force and it's a shooter and I made this one last night. It's so tasty. You're gonna love it. I, I'm gonna love it. Cause I, cause I, cause I tasted it already. Balance. Oh. The. All right. Lil Abe says Darth Vader killed children. Anakin is a saint. Dom says I love the idea of this one. So this one basically is this, right? There is a light side, there's a dark side, there's a Sith side, there's a Jedi side, there's a blue side, there's a red side. How do we take the blue side and the red side, combine it together into something that tastes pretty good and can go down easily? I'll tell you how to. It's this, it's this one. I need to grab myself a shot glass. I have some circular ones over here that I'm gonna use. If I had a shot glass that looked like, like a lightsaber for instance, a, a tall one that didn't have any weird coloration to it, this would probably be perfect here because I feel like it's just a cinematic moment just like waiting to happen. And essentially, what we're going to do is, oh, what was that about Anakin being a killing asshole? I don't know if I, I don't know if I agree with that one. I think he was doing the right thing. Kill the younglings. Kill all of them. How do we do that? Uh, I don't know. We got, we got stuff that we'll do there. Hey, where are you going? You have a jacket on. Oh, she just called. Okay. I thought she was about to leave me for a moment. Yeah, I'm gonna walk. Justice for Anakin! Dude, let it ring. So, free basically... Free Anakin! Free Anakin, he's dead. Camerican is still alive. I'm right here. I'm not dead. I'm not dead yet. We'll wait until after, you know, we'll have some poetic justice and my son will kill me or something. You know, something like that. That'd be pretty cool. So, the idea is we're going to combine something red and something blue together. They're going to be stacked on top of each other. We're going to make it do a thing that is wonderful. So, essentially, what we're going to do is... Oh, my, my uh, cocktail recipe thing just went completely out of whack. There we go. We're going to take some curacao syrup. 
Syrup itself is very, very heavy. It's very, very dense. It doesn't have any alcohol in it. We're going to let that sit up on the bottom. On top of that, we're going to add an, a layer in between. We're going to add blue raspberry liqueur, blue raspberry moonshine if you happen to have it. That's what I have. We're going to top that with some Campari, a bitter component, and then we're going to top that off even more with some Angostura bitters, giving a really nice color change between the red up on top and the blue up on the bottom. And alas, I don't need to be talking anymore about this. I'm already so far up my own ass with my ego that um, we might as well just get this started and take my pain with a shot so that uh, we, can all, uh, we can all enjoy something together. So, do a little switch. Poor Kylo. <laughs> I'm the favorite simpler. That's so nice. Kylo Ren is the best sip. Poor Kylo. So misunderstood. Luke completely fucked this man up. You know, for shoresies though. All right, here we go. Get a little bit down here. A nice... I want this to be as cinematic as possible, which means you are going to have to go yonder. The cocktail angle is love. Cocktail angle is life. Okay, now we got this. I'm going to move this shot over here. A lot of cinematic action that I try to implore in this stream. It's just a lot of... There we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right, now you're a little tilted. There we go. That's a nice shot glass. This one sounds pretty tasty. I would agree. I would agree. So the first thing that we're going to do is in our in our glass, we're going to pour on the bottom some non-alcoholic blue curacao syrup. It's very, very it's a syrup, so it's got no alcohol in it. It's going to float straight to the bottom. If you're measuring things out, I'm just kind of eyeballing it for this one, but if you want to measure things out, this is going to be about a half an ounce of blue curacao syrup. We'll get that almost about a little bit down there. Got a nice blue coat. It's blue right now. Isn't that incredible? Blue Curacao turned to blue. Who knew? Now we're going to get a little careful. We're going to play around with layers now. I'm going to grab myself a bar spoon. What we'll do is we'll grab some blue raspberry liqueur. In my case, we've got this old smoky blue raspberry moonshine, which tastes amazing. Oh. I'm going to pour just a smidge of that. About a quarter of an ounce on top of everything else. We don't want a lot here. Just enough to give, essentially what we're doing here is we're just trying to give a layer for the red to bleed into. All right, that was a lot more than I anticipated, but we got a nice gradient there. It's kind of cool. A nice dark blue layer on the bottom, something a little bit lighter in the middle. Loving the shine. Use the force and balance the colors. A pretty blue indeed. This is my favorite color, if you didn't already know that. Now, we're gonna change things up a bit. Right now, we've added only sweet things. A sweet syrup, a sweet blue raspberry liqueur. We're gonna add something bitter in there. There's a little Campari back here. Excellent does the job. Uh, does the job. We're gonna pour that on top of the blue. There's a little bit of fun density stuff happening here. So we should have a nice mix of those colors. I pour very, very carefully. The back of my bar spoon. There we go. Oh, oh my goodness, we got some bits over here? Lil Abe, my guy. Where's my party horn? I got party horns for this guy. Party horns for the Sith Lord. <laughs> this is great. I'd like to personally think, I don't remember if it was Lil Abe or Annie, but one of you two came up with this one. And I was so inspired by it. My goodness, you have no idea. That's our beautiful community going well over there. We love that. All right, so now, we had this combo between the red and the blue. You can see against the whiteness of my hands. We had a nice balance going on here. That blue layer with the... Oh, that looks great, actually. That blue layer from the blue raspberry, kind of gone. It just kind of mixes with the Campari for a very nice gradient there. It was Annie. Love brainstorming. So now, the last piece of the puzzle is the real dark side of the Force, the real bitter side of the Force. If, if, the, if the side of the Jedi is sweet and blue, the Sith is bitter and red. And what better bitter than to use just straight up Angostura bitters? So essentially all we'll do now is to add just dashes of Ango up on top. And so what I wanna do is, I want a nice background of this so we can see, I really want the effect of the Angostura falling into this to be seen on stream. Oh, there's actually a little bit of blue at the top. Look at that. Ooh, I guess the moonshine's actually falling on top. That's pretty cool. Let me do a little bit of this. 
because I just, I want to, I saw this really cool effect the other night, and I want to see whether or not I can reproduce it. But this, this time you guys watch him, so. We're we'll pouring some bitters up on top, and we should get a cool, like, dro inverse droplet effect happening. Actually, there's, like, barely any bitters in here. Hold up a sec. I need a better bottle of bitters. Here we go. We need some more. We need some more epicness. There we go. If we're aggressive with it, we can see the force pushing against each other. Or at least that's how I like to think of it. This is really cool. Just do a, a bunch. Of, just do a shit ton of that until we're pretty much up at the top. Make a little bit of a mess. And as we let it sit, it should even itself back out. Or maybe not. Either way, we got some pretty. There's some cool stuff happening over there. Ooh, ah, thank you. It's all about it's all about the balancing of the force. That's what it's all about, my friends. That's what it's all about. So honestly, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest here. I was a lot more aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> with my Angostura this time than I was playing around with it last night. <laughs> it's certainly, it's a lot more aggressive. So uh, I think the color difference that I was going for is a little more gone. That was pretty cool. I like that. Anakin and the Jedi are taking over. They are, they are. I need to take a quick photo. Oh my God, I have bitters all over my screen. This is great. I need to take a quick photo of this for the grams. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this. There we go. Oh, that looks really weird. Oh, well. One sec, one sec. I gotta do it for the gr I gotta do it for the gr Actually, I don't even do it for the grams anymore. To be perfectly honest, who cares about the grams? Do it for the Discord. Do it for the cocktail blog. Who cares about Instagram? Instagram's stupid. No, just kidding. So this is a shot called the Balance of the Force. We've combined just about a half an ounce or 15 milliliters of blue curacao syrup, about a quarter of an ounce or seven milliliters of blue raspberry liqueur. The, the layering of this will kind of depend on what you do, but the kicker comes when you add about a half an ounce or 15 milliliters of Campari and fill the rest of your shop glass up with Angostura bitters, dashing it into the top of the cocktail as you see the Sith pushing against the Jedi in a constant balance for the universe and it tastes awesome so take that sucker down Ooh, it's good it's very good there is everything happening here there is at the forefront bitter campari mixing with dry and abrasive angostura bitters the first thing that i get and the thing that lift that sticks around in the front of my mouth is that ango and the Campari. I love the taste of Campari. I actually think it's a little sweet to me. Uh, but combined with the Angostura bitters here, you get something a little akin to like a kind of like a like an Ango Negroni. I love Negroni, so that's not lost on me at all. The other piece of that is that sweet blue raspberry and the sweet cocktails. It, there's literally cocktail syrup at the bottom. It's that sweet component which takes over almost directly after. There is, and I'm not even shitting you, a bitter component in the front of my mouth and like a sweet air in the back of my mouth. It's really good. I love that. And it goes so smoothly. There's a bit of syrup on the bottom, so. Gotta take the rest of that. That, um, that blue curacao syrup is absolutely delicious. The blue raspberry moonshine is also delicious. It was great. Absolutely amazing. I love that. Whew. All right, so that was a shot. That shouldn't take too long, right? Now we're basically at the two hour mark. Incredible. <laughs> I have no words. I don't have words either. I just have lightsabers. This one actually doesn't have the sound effects. I know. Somebody was complaining about the uh, the lack of sound effects before. Wait, wait, wait. I got one. I got one. This is the one that does have sound effects. It's Anna's. It doesn't... It's not very good, though. I say completely swinging around my bar as if I'm not going to break any of the glasses that lie off screen. What if I just like hit all my glasses, you know? Zoom, 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 zoom. It's an excellent, it's an excellent time. We love this. Oh my gosh, this is great. Oh, all right. I put this thing away. There we go. This thing is hard. This thing is hard to sheath. You know what I'm saying? 
It is a couple years old. Anyway, that, this is my favorite one because it's, it's blue and I like the color blue. And it makes my eye do, eyes do really cool things. Because I have the contacts in still. Anyways. Art thou heading to bed, my lovely? Good night. Good night. Kiss your Sith Lord on the cheeks. Put that thing away. <laughs> Go have fun. Bye! Dearest is heading to bed. Everybody say goodnight to Dearest. Love you, baby. Love you, baby kin. And I can. A2N2 is what I'm calling her tonight. No other time because that's kinky. So we have another cocktail this evening. It is also inspired by suggestions from the community, naturally. This one. I'll just get right into it, right? I don't, I don't, I don't need to offer any bad story. You'll, you'll know. I, and this, this is. So the balance of the force thing, I was really confident in that one. This one. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I call this one. Wait, I have to look at my reference. Because I write these things down ahead of time. This one's called the Super Laser Beam. And it's inspired by the Super Laser. You know, unlike the Death Star. I gotta, I gotta apologize for a little bit. I feel like I'm rushing this one a little bit. I feel like I feel like we're kind of rolling through this one. There's just there's just a lot that I wanted to cover. I gotta make sure that I, I want to try to get through it all. So if it feels like things are a little rushed around here, I'll admit they are. Super laser, super laser beam. If this works, cool. If not, whatever. You were here to experience the failure first. So we'll take a step back. We'll take we'll, we'll take a journey far into the far flung flu, fung, far flung flu, far flung future in a galaxy far far away. A long time ago in a long, far, long galaxy words Death Star, right? Beam of laser, super laser, right? Destroys an entire planet, Alderaan. It happened. It's long gone. Alderaan's gone. What if, right, you took the laser beam and the destruction of a planet, right, made it into a cocktail? So here at With the Next Studios, Darth Cameron in, uh, Industries, we tried to make that happen. We tried to take the absolute overwhelming majestic power of the Death Star concave beam cannon super laser trademarked and put it into a cocktail. And that's what we present to thee. You may be asking yourself, how are you gonna do that, Darth Cameron? I'm glad you asked. First, we're gonna need a Death Star. I'm gonna go get some Death Star. Actually, I'm not gonna get the Death Stars just yet. Because the Death Stars are made out of ice, and they're hollow. And if I take them out now, it's gonna be a disaster. So instead, we're gonna mix these things in two parts first, and then the show will happen at the end. Bear with me. And you'll see the absolute majestic power that the Sith has to offer you. Absolute, unlimited power. So let's, let's just go for that. So one container, we need our super laser. And in the other container, we need our planet. It, it, it could be any planet that you want it to be. I'm just choosing Alderaan, slightly, lightly inspired by Alderaan. It was a nice, beautiful, cultural planet, a lot of high-rising skyscrapers, beautiful landscapes, polar ice caps. How do you describe it in a cocktail? I made it blue. Blue's a nice color. It's gonna be great. On the other hand, the other piece of the cocktail is gonna be the laser, the laser beam, right? The laser beam itself was a very nice green color. We're gonna make it green. Green plus blue equals what? I don't know. We'll figure that out. It seems. Chef says, ooh, excited, yeah! Okay, so in one container we'll make our laser, in the other container we'll make our planet. It can be whatever you want it to be. The goal is mass destruction. And whether or not we want it to happen or not, it's gonna happen. So what we'll do first is I'm gonna shake both parts of this. Uh, actually, I'm gonna shake one part. Actually, what did I have for my in directions? Combine the ingredients to make the planet and strain into a rocks glass. Planet. Shake the ingredients for the laser. Okay. So we're combining first and then shaking for the laser beam. All of these recipes, they're probably confusing. They might be going over your head, like the stars in space or a laser beam that just barely missed your skull. That's okay. I post all these to the Discord and some of them find their way to Instagram. 
but I guarantee they will all definitely be in the VOD description of the video that has was on the VOD channel. So if you miss any of this, that's okay. Don't worry about it. We got you covered. So first I'm gonna grab myself glass. And I choose to get uh, this little rocks glass here. It's got a nice concaveness to it. It's got enough space for everything. Actually, I need a bigger one. Never made this cocktail before. So we'll do this one. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna combine a quarter of an ounce of butterfly pea flower infused gin for the color of the blue oceans. Three quarters of an ounce of Sambuca, a kind of licorice type flavored liqueur, and one full ounce of just regular gin. The idea here is we want the terra nature of the gin. We want the butterfly pea flower, which is going to turn things a light blue color. And we want to add the Sambuca because we want to change things up a little bit. This is the place of arts and culture. And the bottle of Ramona Sambuca that I happen to have has picturesque views of the Colosseum in Rome on it. A liqueur classico. Liqueur, product of Italy. And as we know, the Renaissance was a very artsy and cultural time. That's the bullshit that I'm swiping at you today. Sambuca, culture, delicious. Follow? We also need our Empress Gin, or just Butterfly Pea Flower Infused Gin. I make my own Butterfly Pea Flower Infused Gin. Why spend money on Empress? That shit's too expensive. Make some yourself. And we're gonna need some regular gin. I'm gonna use the expensive bottle of gin. I literally never use this thing, so I'm gonna use it this time because I have respect for the planet Alderaan. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Alderaan. We're just gonna combine this together. Nothing fancy. It's just the, the, the regular development of this planet. So uh, we're gonna take it too, I'm not gonna take it too crazily. So what we'll do is I need a, I need a better measuring material for this guy. This guy's actually have a line on it. So a quarter of an ounce of butterfly pea flower infused gin, empress gin. That's the kind of stuff that you can get off right off the shelf. It's got a nice blue hue to it. It's great. Just a quarter of an ounce. We don't need that much of it. You could probably even do like a couple splashes of it too, depending on how blue and water filled you want your particular planet to be. Now, considering this, the Death Star looks like a planet sphere. Makes sense. The planet should also look like a planet also sphere. Two spheres colliding. Eh. The uh, the uh, execution felt a little flawed. So I didn't go that round. There's always room for improvement, though. Three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of Sambuca. There's a nice clear color to it. All it's gonna do is kind of dilute the color of our um, dilute the color of our butterfly pea flower infused gin so far. Then we add a full ounce of regular gin. You could use I, honestly, I don't know what kind of gin would work best here. Uh, maybe a London Dry, American Dry. I've never. This is the first time I'm tasting this, so this is totally new. And we'll figure we'll figure things out as we get into it. I did do a little bit of tasting last night as I was preparing. Into full ounce, about 30 milliliters the rest of our glass. So what we're left, first, left with right now is, and I will show you all, I'll bring the cocktail back, angle back over here. <laughs> Hopefully that worked. Yeah, nice, nice. We have this nice bluish, kind of purplish color, right? Oh, I spilled a little bit of it. It's okay. It's fine. We make mistakes around here too. Just a nice blue color. It's like the blue oceans. I try to put some green in there. However, if I did, it's liquid, so... Physics are t physics can be a little difficult. I'll put my ingredients away. I'll move on to the photon laser beam. I don't completely screw things up there from here. Everything is totally fine. Put my gin away as well. Bye bye. And our Ramona Sambuca goes away as well. I haven't used a lot of Sambuca on this stream. I bought a tiny bottle of it because I was like, we're gonna use it eventually. I just didn't know when. So we have our planet orbiting safely on the far side of the bar. In a galaxy far, far away, there was the planet of Alderaan. Cultured, living, prospering, stuff. Orbiting a star, probably, maybe two. I don't know. That was Tatooine. I think we have super fucking laser beams. I'm gonna grab myself a tiny shaker. I have one of these over here. It's my little... Whoa. The top flew off of it. Shaker over here. We're gonna shake our laser beam because it's full of power, damn. It's full of a bunch of power. I'm gonna add a little bit of ice to this. I don't need that much, to be perfectly honest. Just enough to get things nice and cold. We want things, so the goal of this is, I'll spoil the ending just a little bit. The green cocktail is going to go inside of a hollowed ice cube 
The actual execution of this hollowed ice cube might not have been super good, but we're gonna try it our best anyways. The idea is our Death Star Ice Sphere is going to hold the laser beam, and we're gonna place it into the cocktail. We want this liquor over here to be as cold as possible to match the temperature of the ice cube so it doesn't crack upon impact. The walls of the ice sphere probably aren't dense enough. I, ch I experimented with it a little bit. It's an art that needs to be mastered. This whole cocktail thing is an art that I am constantly working towards getting ever so better at. And uh, with everybody watching, I hope we take this journey together continually. So what we're gonna add to our shaker, oh, but first, the little says, oh no, anyone still on? That planet is in all the wrong places. Oh, get it? All the wrong places. That's a good one. So we're gonna need to add stuff to our laser beam. Our laser beam is green. So what do, we, what, what, do we, what do we do that's green? I got a couple of things here. Some of these are functional, some of them otherwise. We're gonna add one part Midori, one part OJ, one part sparkling wine, and one part lemon juice all to our shaker. The actual volume amount, I don't exactly know yet. I'm putting it into an ice sphere. I want it to be cold, and I'm gonna fill it up to the top of the ice sphere, and we'll see if that works. I'm gonna give it a shot. I need to go to the front of the bar and grab myself one of the sparkling wines. But aside from that, we got everything over here. Sparkling wine, sparkling wine, sparkling wines. Oh, BC says, come to the dark side. We have cookies. We do have cookies. We also have uh, fat infused cookies from the bacon that we made earlier, and it was absolutely delicious. You want to come to the dark side cookies and baking establishments right now, because if you do, we'll give you a 50% off discard code on your next Sith Lord cake. <laughs> Actually written on it with blood <laughs> and cut with a lightsaber. Double-sided one. We pride ourselves on quality here with the next studios. And Sith powers! Anyway, so we need to add all those equal parts in there. So I'm gonna add my Midori. I gotta get my Midori. It's the green stuff. And again, I'm gonna mix these in terms of a base of a single ounce. What the actual measurements are, I'm not sure. But we'll add a full ounce of our Midori. It's our melon liqueur, or some other melon liqueur. There's other melon liqueurs out there, probably. Then we're going to add some orange juice. I'll go back for our orange juice, which is sitting right here in the corner. Give it a bit of a shake. It's been sitting for a hot second. We like to keep things cool around here. Single ounce of that. All equal parts. This is a base of 30 milliliters, a.k.a. a full ounce. Your mileage may vary. Next, we're going to add a, spark a, a sparkling ounce of wine. That's what I meant to say, right? I gotta open this thing. That kind of, yep, that's just, wow, that was easy. Get over there, crack it. There we go, yeah, not very exciting. I don't really like sparkling wine, to be honest. Not this stuff either. That's what we're going for. A full ounce of your sparkling wine. We're gonna add a little bit of acidity there. That's what it's all about. Are you wearing green contacts? Oh, wait, 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 let me get the lightsaber. Hi, Mom. That's my mother. Yes, I absolutely am. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It makes me look evil. Your son is evil. <laughs> Kill the younglings. Anyways, it's fun stuff. Oh, my goodness. I think we might have missed that one. So close, perhaps. All right. Let me go to... Then we need one final thing. We need a full ounce of lemon juice. We're just mixing everything in there. So this piece of it is actually a little more functional than other ones. One thing that you may not be aware of, which I'm sure you are aware of, I have the most faith in you, I really do, is chemistry. Chemistry has a thing called acids and bases, naturally. I'm not trying to be condescending. Actually, I am. I'm a Sith Lord today. I'm going to be as condescending as possible. Science is a same thing, dipshit. You take acid, you add it to a pH indicator, it changes colors. You know what's a pH indicator? Butterfly pea flower. What did I do to my gin? I bastardized it with butterfly pea flower. Pea. Flower. It's disgusting. It's bastardized. It's delicious. We're gonna take our acid, when we add it to our pH indicator, it's gonna change colors. That's just how science works. Kid. Youngling. Sorry, I didn't mean to be so mean. I'm not usually that mean on this show. Sometimes I have the opportunity to act really raunchy and stuff. We did an X-rated cocktail stream one time. That was fun. That was really fun. I, I channeled my inner Hugh Hefner. It was wonderful. 
We have a full ounce of lemon juice, about 30 milliliters, and we're gonna add that to our laser beam. And not our planet. If we did so, we'd completely ruin the suspense. Now we're gonna shake that. We're gonna shake everything together to create our laser beam. Our laser beam is going to go inside of a hollowed out Death Star. This is the part of this cocktail that I'm gonna say, disclaimer, this might not work properly. But we're gonna try our best anyway. So let's just let's just go for it. We're gonna work with what we got because the show must go on. And by God, if you have a giant freaking laser beam, super laser beam, then um, what's really standing in our way aside from ourselves? Give this a shake. We want it nice and cool, so I want this to be as cold as possible. This is like it's there, there's no uh, there's a the shaker's a little special. It was kind of leaking for a little bit. It doesn't usually do that. I do not have the leaky shaker. That's not me. Not not here. Not here in this Death Star readout. I want it to be nice and cold. All right, here comes the part of the cocktail that I have no idea if it's going to work. So we're gonna watch it happen in real time. If this works, cool. If not, eh, whatever. It's fine. So, this is what we'll do. I'm gonna grab my cocktail angle. I'm gonna bring it on over here. And we're going to now zoom in on a beautiful little planet that we like to call Alderaan. And pop it over here. Hello. This is the planet Alderaan. Or at least we're saying it's the planet Alderaan. Isn't it beautiful? The beautiful planet Alderaan. Is it going to come out green? Dom, what do you think happens when we shoot a planet with a f super laser? You're just going to have to make your bets right now. You're just going to have to place your bets. What's going to happen to the beautiful planet? It's a beautiful planet. This is the, just, just bear with me for a moment. This is a planet. It'll be great. I'm so hyped. So now I must go into my freezer and I'm going to get one of our Death Stars. So the technique that I use to do this is I have a Death Star ice mold this is what it looks like. This is, our, this is our Death Star. Our Death Star. Slowly but surely orbiting around. Where's the, where's the actual star part of the Death Star? There it is. <laughs> it looks a little funny, right? So what we want to do is we're going to take our Death Star and we're hopefully going to pour a cocktail into it. I'm going to go grab a little funnel that I got. Do I have a funnel up here? Yes, I do have a funnel. And we're gonna charge up. We're gonna charge up our super laser. That's what we're doing here. To charge up our super laser, I'm gonna put the funnel into the Death Star, like so, and hopefully not make a mess. Here we go. Charging up our laser beam. Charging up our laser beam. Now. We're gonna place it above our little planet Alderaan over here. Oh, okay, okay. Just gonna watch the magic happen. So we're gonna try to. So, whether or not this breaks on its own is one thing. We can wait a little while, we can see what happens, we can just wait for the oncoming carnage, or we just let it happen. And I'm just gonna let it happen. So now, we're gonna count. One, two, three, fire. One, two, three, fire. Sort of, kind of, get in there. You know what, just fucking go for it. Just, you know what, yeah, go for it. There we go, just go for it. Oh no, oh my God, what happened to the planet Alderaan? What happened, oh my God. It's, it's exactly what we wanted it to. We've still got a little extra, we still got a little extra um, laser beam power, so let's just gonna top that off with the rest of the laser. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, we have so much fun around here. R.I.P. Alderaan, get him out of here. Oh, there's a piece of the Death Star still remaining. See, this is the problem, right? This is not a very sustainable super laser procedure because your Death Star is gone. That's what you get for building a single vent all the way down to the core inside of it, you dummies. <laughs> Absolute mass destruction. Oh my goodness gracious. I have made a complete mess over here. You know, it's all about having fun over here. That's what it's all about. That was our super laser beam. Essentially what we did is, you know what I just realized? I really should have tasted both cocktails first. I completely forgot to do that. 
I've completely forgot to describe tasting notes for the planet and <laughs> the laser beam. But they're combined to, but it's in there now, so we did it live. So this is our super laser beam after the event. It smells a little licorice-y. There are still remnants of the planet. So imagine the nebula of just scatter that is out there in the solar system right now. Just pieces of planet everywhere that is symbolized by the remaining spell of the Sambuca from the planet. It's very potent. It's an easy, it's licorice-y, it's nice. I'm also getting a couple of notes of, I guess maybe the orange juice. There's something else on there. It's mostly the Sambuca. Combined, it's got a nice green color. Previously, it was, previously it was kind of uh, blue. Now it's otherwise. Intendedly, I was hoping that the lemon juice would have a more potent effect on the butterfly pea flower gin on the inside of the planet cocktail. However, you would have to add more of that. The more pH indicator that you add, the more the more intense the actual color changing effect is going to happen. So that probably needs a little bit of tweaking. But we got something that's kind of grimy. It looks like the remainder, it's just a photon cloud, you know, from the laser beam. It's a little bit licorice-y. It's sweet. It's got a teensy bit of sourness to it. I think this one in general is best labeled as another show type of drink. However, it's honestly, it's not too bad. There's a lot of stuff going in there. So in total, what we have in this glass right now is Midori, melon liqueur, orange juice, sparkling wine, lemon juice, gin, blue gin and sambuca and the sambuca is the most potent flavor there there is a nice sweet flavor coming from but not only the orange juice but also the midori it's just got it just tastes like fruit it's like a slightly tart fruit i'd say the fruit that i'd have to pick closely to is probably pear because a lot of the pear notes i think are coming from that prosecco that i put in there the sparkling wine in particular because i've used this one before and it gives me like kind of appley pear-ish vibes and to be honest, I don't really like the sparkling wine on its own. I don't remember what brand it was. La Meridian? What is this? Whoops. Hello. It's 90 plus Prosecco. I don't like this stuff. I'm not getting paid to say any of this. I don't like it. It's not really good. But I've been working with it because I bought like a six pack at the store. It's honestly not too bad. I don't think I've ever had a cocktail with Sambuca in it before. And this is, this is rather balanced as it goes to that. So I think my takeaways from this are because this was a totally was X bar original bar with an X original uh, that it could in terms of flavor it's nice it's a good it's a good cocktail on its own it's a nice collection of flavors it really showcases the sambuca in a way that you wouldn't otherwise appreciate and i think that's mostly coming from the sambuca the midori the lemon juice and the orange juice as well I think if you take this just, just those components, you'll probably get the cocktail that you see here, minus a little bit of dilution from the other spirits and stuff. And you could probably just jack up the alcohol content by adding some gin or vodka in there. The gin's a little lost on me, I'll be honest on that. I think this would probably be just fine with some vodka, just to, just to pump the numbers up a little bit. All in all, not too bad. A drink worth its weight in clones. I do say so myself. Again, I don't really have a lot of context on Star Wars. I, I've watched every single movie at least twice, and for some reason my brain just doesn't absorb any of it. So I'm working with whatever little references that I have. Dom says, good to know, but what vodka would you use? Ah, just like, well, vodka is usually a very neutral grain spirit. I like Tito's. Uh, I think I think Tito's is a nice go-to just because like I feel like the flavor there, th there is a little bit of flavor in vodka. Um, mostly because, like, I've had some really cheap vodkas before that, like, leave a really weird aftertaste, and I can't quite describe it because I don't have one literally right in front of me, and I don't really plan on putting it right in front of me, but Tito's, I feel like, would work fine here. There's an excellent, uh, brand of vodka from close to my hometown, and it's called Skunk Town Vodka. It's got potato notes to it. It's a potato vodka that actually slightly tastes a little bit like the ground, and I like that a lot there. It imparts a little bit of the flavor there, so it's not specifically neutral there, but it's, it's close enough, I'd say. That would be my recommendations. Dom says, I am the Star Wars guy. I can normally answer just about anything about it. Dom, you might be vying for the Star Wars guy with at least two or three other people here. It's interesting because I feel like I have at least three or four people in my life who are all independently the Star Wars guy, and you all exist so peacefully in my mind. Or perhaps you're at odds with each other. I, I am I'm a Sith Lord. Ha 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 Sith Lord, cloaky things. Killing younglings. In any case, I love this one. 
those were those were the two big suggestions that I definitely wanted to uh, kind of form into a cocktail. I hope I hope these are, I hope these met expectations. And even if they didn't, I had fun with it. So, and what a show it was! Let me grab a coaster for this guy. And um, I did say there was at least five cocktails that I definitely wanted to get through, and I can't remember what the other one was. So let's uh, let's let's go back. They'll do a little bit of cleanup over here. I actually I need to I need to swap out my bar mat. I don't. It usually doesn't get this sticky during this part of the stream, but it is very very grungy. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean this up because this is nasty, nasty, disgusting. I need to get a I need to get a bigger. <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger bucket over here. <laughs> this is getting wacky over here. I'm gonna do a little bit of a wipe down. We'll go into a little with we'll a brief brief intermission. I need to do some cleanup over here. So let's hang out for a little bit. Star Wars fans are either mega toxic or mega great, but no in between. But some points have validity to why it's not good anymore. But, but, says Dom. Yeah, no, I, I really like, so the thing that I like about Star Wars, it's the sci-fi aspect of it. I just love all the heart that they put into, I mean, I guess this goes before the whole Disney thing happened where I used to keep up with the lore a little bit more. But I feel like the lore doesn't have, I mean, maybe that's just me, like, getting older and looking like, like, condescendingly on the generations past or looking condescendingly on the like the newer generations to be perfectly honest i feel like the lore is not as like taken care of as it was previously and i guess previously you could argue that it wasn't taken care of at all there were these all these other like third party books and stuff coming up literally out of every possible nook cranny and crack of the world and they were all part of the star wars canon and then disney came in and was like cracked down on that we're like no 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 this is the canon and this is the canon not into this stuff because it's not our ip and a piece of that kind of felt like a money a money pull you know it's just it's what a corporation will do it's what disney does that's what disney's disney don't do their disney thing However, it's a, maybe it's a little more easy to keep track of, and I don't really keep track of it, so I'm not the right person to ask about this. However, it just feels that way from an outsider's perspective. Dom says, I think we just need to let it flush itself out and get good writing that's not bothered by outside agendas. I wish there were like a thing that we could have, but so long as somebody owns the intellectual property, I don't know if it's, yeah, I don't even know if it's gonna happen. We can hope and we can hope. We can let it live on our minds. That's just why, you know what? That's just why we have to keep all this stuff living on its own. Living in our brains. Keep it with the communities. Let the Reddit communities and stuff, like, keep on going. And um, hopefully doesn't, Disney doesn't freaking sue everybody. That'd be wild. Excuse me, man. Go back. Go back. All right, let me grab my other bar mat. I had it on the floor. This this has been probably the messiest stream that I've had in a while, so. <laughs> but it's fun. It all happens here. I like to think of it this way. I see this particular state whoa, this particular stage here as a place to fuck up, as a place to exper experiment, as a place to explore, because like, I, I don't know. I don't know of any, I, I don't I don't feel like there's any place that I can go to, like a third place, like a bar, for instance, to go in and be like, I want this, this, that, that, and the other thing, and not run up an insanely high bar tab. I like to think that this little stage that we have here is a place to explore, let your mind go wild, in terms of like a, from a liquid perspective, because that's just kind of what I do, and when I do it alone, it just feels lonely, so... That's what I kind of like it to be. Do we screw up? Are we playful? Are we childish? Are we are we chaotic? Yes, we are. That's just that's how the bar with an X is. And hopefully, it stays that way. I'll clear up my board over here. We'll move on to the next cocktail this evening. Will we get through all of them? I don't know. It depends on how much my fortitude continues to go up. My constitution in terms of my alcohol content. I don't think there's been a lot of alcohol this time around. All right. So let me take a uh, look see. Oh, what else do we have? We did the Mustafar Lava Flow already. We did RDs, aka Jabba Juice already. We did the Balance of the Force shot. And we did the Super Laser Beam Spectacular. What else do we have? There's that. Maybe that. Oh, oh, oh. I remember what I was teasing already. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Order 66, right? Kill the younglings. Slaughter the younglings. All of them. That's excellent. 
So this next cocktail is called the Youngling Slayer, also from the Sin City Bartender, also recommended by our good friend, Domstar. It was called the Youngling Slayer. I like to say first and foremost, that a lot of the cocktail recipes that I feature on here anyway are because of suggestions and whatnot. So if anybody out there has suggestions at all, feel free to DM them to me directly, put them on our Discord server. Use, I think exclamation point suggests works now. So if you try that, I'll try to see if I can include it in a recipe at some point in time. We like to have fun around here. What I recommend, I'm lost, LOL. This is like months ago, dude. Don't, don't even worry. I got you, I got you. So the Youngling Slayer combines a couple of things together. The idea is we fill our glass with our younglings and then we execute order 66 upon them and then drink them libate them destroy them engulf them ingest them that is the idea what we're combining together is some blue raspberry vodka some orange bitters some lemon lime soda and island punch pucker of which i have none of so apparently island punch pucker is a combination of pineapple banana orange and sour and the color blue so um i'm gonna put all those things together in a sort of like a kind of bastard type cocktail situation and we'll just see where i get with it and uh, i think everything is all it's all built on top of each other so this is going to be built over ice it's going to be exciting i need a nice what i got for a nice tall glass over here i have i wish that i had something that would better showcase all the youngs in the glass but i used my big tall collins glass already um so i don't have that but a little so i think i'll just use whatever i got I'll use this guy over here. Oh, actually, 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 actually. I got this tall guy. There we go. There'll be plenty of younglings to fit in this guy. So what we're going to need first are some younglings. Sour Patch Kids. Sour, sweet, youngling. Gone. We're also going to need some ice. I've got quite a few ice cubes over here that I can take part in using. I'll just use the rest of them. I don't know exactly how much farther we're going to go this evening. We're off to a, we're off to a, totally off to the races here. So... Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to put into our glass a bunch of younglings, a bit of, gla a bit of, a bit of ice, you know, they're training, they're getting a little rough around the edges, we're trying to rigid them up to become men, women, Jedi in their own rights. That's the idea. We're going to nurture them. We're going to give them an idea that they had a fighting chance and open the container at least. Does this thing open properly? Oh, I could have just done that. Yeah, yeah, I definitely could have done that. Yeah, I'm just gonna add a couple of- so that's what we want to do first. We want to set the stage. Set the stage with our ice cubes, right? Put a couple of- put a couple of ice cubes in there. Put a, whoops, hello there. Put a couple of ice cubes in there. Put a couple of more ice cubes in there. Put a couple more younglings in there. There we go. Put some younglings in there. There we go. Oh, let's get a view of this. What are we- what the hell are we doing over here? What hell are we doing? Let's watch it happen. Everybody gets to watch the absolute horror that is this. This is our... Oh, I gotta back you up a little bit. That's a tall-ass glass. Damn. That's a tall-ass glass now. Sour Patch Kid. Sour Sweet Gun. And add some more ice to it. I may actually be running a little low on the ice that we have. Wow, look at that. Right up to the... Almost to the top. I needed more ice. Incredible. Put more Sour Patch Kids! I'm gonna add a half Death Star on top. This is the other hollow Death Star that I had, just in case the first one failed. I'll put it right up on top. The younglings are- wait, can I stick an, a youngling into the Death Star? Wait. There we go, there's our Death Star. Youngling. See, look at him, we got- we got <laughs> younglings inside of the Death Star. I don't know if this is canon. This most certainly isn't canon. There we go. There we go. Inside of that. They're actually they're actually in it. Look at that. They're inside of it. Get get him. There we go. Yeah, you, you know what you want in there. Younglings. Younglings, I say. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the other components. We're gonna kill them all. We're gonna drown them. That's just that's just how it works around here. We're gonna add luster dust to our glass to make it sparkle because murdering children is sparkly. I'm gonna take the Death Star out for just a moment. Add some boop. Luster dust. Luster dust. Dusting the luster. There we go. That's enough in there. 
Whenever adding a, the luster dust, you never need that much of it. You, you, ne you never need as much luster dust as you may think that you need. But it's, a, it's, not, it's fun to add anyways. Next, we're going to add two ounces of blue raspberry vodka, naturally. I do not have the vodka, but I got this old smoky blue raspberry stuff. I'm so happy to know that the, um, the blue raspberry stuff is making an appearance a lot more recently. I'm very happy about that. Two full ounces, or about 60-ish milliliters. I'm going to put that, you know, I'm going to put that into the Death Star, because why not? It'll eventually start breaking apart. There it goes. It's just completely melting on itself. Absolutely delightful. And going to the bottom. Next, what we're going to need to add is five dashes of orange bitters. I think I have a much bigger glass than what it's called here, so if I need to fill it up more, we'll do that. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Orange bitters right up on top. Next, what we'll do is we'll add six ounces of lemon lime soda. I've got a shit ton of Sprite. So we're going to use a shit ton of Sprite. Still fizzy. Six full ounces. That's like what? 60 milliliters times three. Just about 180 milliliters. Maybe like 175-ish, if the math works out. Six. I'm sorry. Two. Four. And six. Maybe that will fill it all up. Six. There we go. Oh, that actually kind of worked. All right, and now we're going to add a quarter of an ounce, or basically the rest of our container of Island Blue Pucker. I'll be perfectly honest. I don't have Sour Blue Pucker. Uh, sour, sour Island Blue Pucker. However, it seems to combine some pineapple, a little bit of banana, and a bunch of other things together. So I've got a couple of different ingredients to try to take hold of that. I have pineapple liqueur. I thought I had pineapple liqueur around here. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I've got... Pineapple liqueur. I've got banana liqueur. What else is tropical? Orange, orange liqueur. Let's put some. Let's put some triple sec in there. There we go. We need sour. I'll put some pucker apple in there. What else do we need? And blue. I'll put some more. I'll put some of the curacao syrup in there. Or just blue curacao. Let's booze this thing up. Let's drown the children in liquor. Don't do that in real life. Bad idea. I'm just going to completely eyeball this. Because we're supposed to put a half an ounce in there, and that's just not what we're getting. So a little, we'll add a little bit of sour. Then we'll add a little bit of banana. Then we'll add... It's going to change the cocktail angle to be up here a little bit. Then we're going to add a little bit of pineapple. Oh, I've completely lost the top of that. Maybe a little bit more pineapple. Where did that go? There you is. <laughs> Top that sucker off. Then we'll add a little bit of orange. This is our stand-in for Island Pucker. And then we'll add a bit of cur curacao back up on top. Just to make sure all the colors just gel. There we go. As the little pieces of our Death Star that we have remaining just kind of like exist like that. There we go. A little bit more blue there. There's a lot happening here. This is all over the place. Put everything back in their constituent locations. Thank you for playing, everybody. We appreciate it. We appreciate it greatly. Now we'll stir it. I'll move this guy back a little bit so we can get a whole view of the entire thing. All of the younglings. All together now. In this container. And we'll just give it a stir. All the younglings together. All dead. Every single one of them. Get get in there. Yeah, you get in there. Silly Death Star. Younglings are for kids, I guess. I guess. I don't know. Oh my god, they're like all sitting at the bottom. Oh my goodness gracious. This is also very much for show. This is hilarious. <laughs> They've all completely <laughs> they completely sunk to the bottom. The little children. It's because they're dead. That's actually not bad tasting. Wow. Hmm. It's not bad at all. These beautiful younglings. All at the bottom. My goodness gracious. It's not that bad. Not that bad at all. Alright. So. I'm going to be frank with y'all. There's a lot of murder that just happened here. I'm not sure how I feel about that. 
I'm just kidding. I know exactly how I feel about that. Murder the younglings. Murder the younglings. We are part of the Sith Lords here, and as such, we like to bring chaos and destruction to the universe, naturally. Or there's probably something more philosophically into that. I just, I just don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm very out of the loop on this one. Kylie says, Hi, camera. I see you love Star Wars. I like Star Wars. I like starting wars pretty good. I like the Star Wars. I'm a Sith Lord, you see? It's all about the, it's our whole thing. Indeed. Love Star Wars as well. It's very good. It's all Star Wars this evening. At least I think it is. It seems. So the cocktail that we've just created is called the Youngling Slayer. And uh, essentially we put a bunch of younglings in a glass. Sour Patch Kids. We put some blue raspberry liqueur in there. We put some... What else is in there? I must look at my cheat sheet. I don't know what else we put in there. Oh, I have to enter my password in my phone. Because apparently my fingerprint doesn't work when there's bitters all over the screen. We put some blue raspberry vodka in there, or moonshine, we put some orange bitters in there, we put some lemon lime soda in there, we put a bunch of other flavors that just remind us of the tropics in there. You could use a Sour Island Pucker from, I think, De Kuiper. It's blue. Or you can just add something blue, and something pineapple-y, and something orangey, and something sour to it. That's what I did. What exactly those constituents are, I'll describe them in the cocktail blog later. How does it taste, though? After we've killed everybody. Hmm. Committing the murder of hundreds of children. Never tasted so good. This is very pleasant. I'm not even I'm not even remotely considering the ramifications of my actions now. And it's got a nice sheen to it because we put some luster dust in there. This is balanced. It's got a nice tartness to it, just slightly. A nice sweetness to it. I think the main flavor that I'm getting here is that blue raspberry moonshine. Despite the fact that we filled the thing mostly all the way up with Sprite lemon lime soda, it's very much tasting of blue raspberry. But it's slightly sour from, from the other ingredients. We had a little the orange bitters is not the sour part. I think it's the it's I think it's the little bit of the um, sour apple liqueur that I put in there that kind of brings up that sour uh, sour level a little bit, and it's tasty. This is really good. I feel like this would taste excellent blended. <laughs> Which, now that I think about it, sounds even more chaotic because we put Sour Patch Kids in there and I'm probably not getting all the sourness of the- Oh, the Sour Patch Kids, is, that's where the sourness is coming from. Duh, it's, dis it's dissolving all the citric acid. Obviously. That's obviously what's going on there. It can't possibly be anything else. Oh my goodness. That's tasty. I like that. If I had a spare, I already used the blender this time around, and it, it is, it's filled with dark sand from our Mustafar Lava Flow, which is our first cocktail this evening. Uh, otherwise, I'd put this in there in a heartbeat. If I had like a Nutribullet, like a spare one, I just, I, I keep finding that I need more, I need more stuff at this bar. I need more things, more shakers, more measuring majiggers, more all of this stuff, more glasses, more blenders. More, more, more. It's that unlimited power aspect that comes from me personifying the Sith today. That's very tasty. That's not lost on me at all. That's really, really good. It's just kind of sweet. It's blue raspberry, hint of pineapple, very candy-like. Not very sour. It is sweet. And it will most definitely be gone, eventually. And I'd like to blend that, honestly. That's not too bad. So that was our Youngling Slayer. And I like it. I like it very much. Let's see. We have done one, two, three, four, five cocktails so far this evening. And technically, I think there's three more. I don't know if we'll be able to get all through them. However, we'll give it a try. We have one here. It's another layer. It's another layering job. I want to try this one. We're gonna move on to another one. Another cocktail. Because we, we move quickly through this one. The kill it, killing younglings is a like a one and done job. It's like step one, find your younglings. Step two, that's it. That's all there is. All there is to it. That's how you kill younglings. So I'll put that off to the side. And we'll do another cocktail. This one also comes from our geeky bartender book from Cassandra Reader, aka the geeky bartender. It does have a really nice shine. I, I should. I want to take a picture of it from over here. It's got a very nice shine to it. Oh, our beautiful younglings, all dead at the bottom of the glass. Isn't it beautiful? Delicious! 
I'll put my book back over here. Do a little bit of an erase. This next cocktail is called, I know we already did a Tatooine one technically, it was the Jawas. But this one's called the Tatooine Sunset. And it is all about the beautiful views of our favorite desert planet. Coming up in a little bit. Cue commercial. No, just kidding. Ads are done. Tatooine, Tatooine Sunset. I need to remember how to actually spell this thing. Tattoo, tattoo. Ta. Sunset. All right. So our Tatooine Sunset. I'll show you. It comes from, or it comes from this book, The Geeky Bartender, specifically on page 72. And it looks beautiful. The reason why I really wanted to cover this one was because it just looks it looks so damn nice. It looks so damn pretty. Like check this out. Like if this is actually how this thing layers, god, it's going to look so good. And so I wanted to give that a try. Most of the cocktails that I planned for this evening were all things that I really wanted to try for one reason or another. If we get more co if, for the ones that we miss, if we wind up missing them here, maybe we'll come back and do Star Wars again next year, or literally any other time. We don't have to abide by the rules of the calendar. We can do whatever we want to. So the Tatooine Sunset, according to Cassandra Reader and the Geeky Bartender, the Star Wars Cantina is iconic, especially Chow Moon's Cantina on Mos Eisley, that wretched hive of scum and villainy. You probably have the music in your head right now. I did and it's understandable. This cantina is where you first saw some of the more colorful aliens that occupy that galaxy far, far away. It's where Obi-Wan unleashed the Force on that ruffian's arm. It's where Han shot first. In the movies, the drawing inks enjoyed at the cantina are mostly a mystery, but the companion materials, like Star Wars, absolutely everything you need to know, elaborates on them. Among the top five drinks served at Chal Moon's is the Tatooine Sunset. The interp this interpretation looks like a sunset with a bright band the blue top and uses spirits developed from desert plants like agave tequila and pomegranates to bring everything together and so we'll do that one next attend a tatooine sunset it's got a nice pretty hue to it to be honest my eyes are <laughs> totally burning from these contacts uh, at least they are now. I'm getting a little hot under the collar. So this might be the... I think this will probably be the last cocktail that we have of this evening. And then we'll end things after that. It seems that these, these shows really take a lot out of me, dude. But it's so much fun. My goodness. So what we need to do... I'm going to follow the instructions very carefully because this looks like it's going to be a layered cocktail. So I want to make sure that we get every single layer possible in here. What we are going to combine together are as follows. Some silver tequila, some blue curacao, some pomegranate liqueur, grenadine, some cracked ice, fresh lemon juice, orange juice, and a couple of cherries up on top. So the first thing that we need to do is in a small mixing glass, we're going to stir together some tequila and blue curacao, and we're going to set it aside. That's step number one. So I'll grab myself a mixing apparatus. I will, let's see. We just need to stir together some things in there. I want to keep it nice and chill. So I'll put a big old, big old ice cube in there. And I say ice cube. When I say ice cube, I have extra Death Stars. So I want to take one of my other Death Star ice cubes and I'll pop it in there. I just got to get it loose from its container. Come on, bro. Dude, this is... These ice, these uh, ice makers these ice molds actually came with a little tool meant specifically to help you get them out and um uh i'm not i'm not doing very well with this right now oh almost got it almost got it almost got the death star almost e oh got it death star there we go <laughs> the death star in there i need to clean this guy this entire bar is a freaking mess i love it so now we'll pour our tequila and our blue curacao over top. We'll need one and a half ounces of a clear silver tequila. The silver tequila that I have is Bribon. I don't know what that means in Spanish, unfortunately. I don't need about an ounce and a half of that. I am going to measure according to my, oh, this is not my, is this my metric jigger? No, this is my, this is, where's the other one? Hmm. I have like four jiggers now. I'm losing track of them. One and a half ounces or about 22 milliliters of your Blanco tequila. Blanco, silver, tequila, tequila. And actually, 
this is the remainder of my tequila. So that's all the all the bribon is gone. All the bribon is gone. But the bribon is gone. That's all there is. There we go. Right into the recycling bin. Next, we're gonna need a half an ounce of blue curacao. About 15 milliliters that I will add to the stirring apparatus. Flip it over. There's a, is there, this thing's actually graduated. That's cool. Huh. I just bought these guys the other day. That's pretty cool. And a half an ounce of 15 milliliters. Add that, it's nice and it's blue. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We're gonna stir that up and then set it to the side to create the other parts of this cocktail. So I'll grab myself a stirring spoon. Did I use all my stirring spoons already? Hmm. All right. Well, the Youngling Slayer was pretty blue, so we'll just use this one as well. I'm gonna stir this around and just get it all nice and chilled. What's the next part? Let's just read that. In the serving glass, add the pomegranate liqueur and grenadine, then fill the glass with cracked ice. So, it's interesting. So the pomegranate liqueur that I actually have was a gift from a friend of mine, and it's actually tequila based. So it is gonna fit perfectly in this cocktail here. I'm looking forward to see how they, this one in particular, it's got a beautiful presentation to it. Um, and I feel like it's gonna taste pretty good too. Also, that taste, I've never had tequila and blue curacao together. That is fine. I love that. So let's set this guy off to the side. And in our serving glass, our serving glass in this case is just going to be a normal type looking glass. And I think the one that I wanna use is going to be this gift from my younger brother. This one here. We're gonna add a full ounce of pomegranate liqueur, about 30 milliliters, and a half an ounce of grenadine, or about 15 milliliters. I'm gonna grab my grenadine from the fridge. My pomegranate liqueur from down below. The pomegranate well, that liqueur that I have this evening is one called La Pinta. And it came from my good pal Pepper. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. I just gotta open it. There we go. We got it eventually. I need a full ounce of that pomegranate liqueur. Um, there's a little bit of blue curacao left remaining in here. Dump that out. One full ounce or about 30 milliliters. It has a nice dark red color. As I start, when I get to the piece where we start layering them on top of each other, I'll bring the cocktail angle over and we can all watch together. Next one we're gonna need is grenadine. Grenadine is also red. That's why we're adding it. This particular grenadine was homemade a while ago. I really need to make some more and stop using this stuff. However, we're gonna add a half an ounce of it. And just forget how potentially old it is. It keeps well. My god, the recipe keeps her so well. It still tastes magical. And then we're going to add some cracked ice to our glass. I'm just going to take, I, I guess I can take the other Death Star and um, just crack it over here. Let me get back in there, Jens. All right, there you go. I grabbed the other Death Star. Um, ba -da, da -da, da -da -da, piece of ice. Let me get my the best thing to do here in order to get these things apart is just like just get your fingers in there. Just just go crazy. That's pretty much the theme. This is that's the entire theme tonight. Just like get your fingers in there. It's just how it is apparently. I'm gonna take this whole Death Star ice sphere and just crack it over top. Hopefully not making it. You know, let's make a mess. Let's make a mess or two. That is intense. That is really intense. My god. That thing does not want to crack. My god. Evidently, a plasma cannon works better than this. Or a laser beam straight into the vent. There's a technique here that I apparently have not caught on to yet. I'm not hurting myself because I have a ring on, so it hits the ring instead. How in God's name is this not working? This is incredible. Cracked 
damn you! Unlimited power. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Oh god, I am the Senate! My god. Okay, there's a piece of it. Great. We're finally making some headway. I'm gonna turn it around for a hot second. Rich says, sphere stronger than square. Correct. Sphere much stronger than square. Okay, another piece of it fell into the ground. That's awesome. Oh, another piece of it? Maybe? Maybe? Nope. Okay, that went under the bar. Ground ice. Could be. It's, it's icy on the ground now. Watch out for groundwater freezing overnight. Oh my god. Here. Get in there. Just, just, just let me... <sighs> by the power vested in me by the Sith. And the dark side. Crack. Sounds. Anyway, I broke the ice. Uh, we've learned something here today. Another uh, reminder from geometry. Spheres, man. Strong as fuck, dude. What else do we need to do? Um, Add the lemon and orange juices to the serving glass. We're going to add lemon and orange juice to the top that uh, of this glass. We have stuff on here. We're going to start to get a cool layering effect. So I'm going to not whack my hand anymore. Certainly not. We'll just take the let's take the cocktail angle. I'm just we're gonna stop looking at my uh, face on the big screen for a little bit. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna rest my chops for a little bit. Maybe frown for a little bit. Yeah, that's within character for a Sith Lord, right? Just frowning all the time. Maybe I don't know. It's the hatred flowing through me. What it's all about. All right, let's get this angle all set up. Nope. Other way. Other way. Right. There we go. That's what it's all about. Let me bring you down just a tad. There we go. We'll watch the Tatooine sunset beautifully. I also need to grab some cherries from my refrigerator. I know I can get. So I'll do that for you. Where are you? My cherries. Oh, cherries. Are you? What's that? My cherries. Cherry, cherries. Delicious. Here we are. Oh yeah, this is definitely our last one. I am so tired now, my goodness. I'm really feeling that. I'm re I'm really feeling it! This is the part that we set aside. We'll get back to it. Now we need to add orange juice and lemon juice to the glass. So, we need a half an ounce to about a fluid ounce of fresh lemon juice. I put a lot of ice in there, so I'm gonna go with the half ounce. And I think that's just gonna be the rest of this particular, um, the rest of this lemon over here. So that's what we'll do. That blue is nice to look at. It is a nice, beautiful blue. Join the favorite color blue club. We're always welcoming new folks. So put some lemon juice on top of that. It comes out rather slowly, so it should stack a little bit. Have a nice gradient. Now we need orange juice on top as well. That's all just... Just it. There we go. And the orange juice, which was, in this case, about two to three fluid ounces. So we'll add two full ounces. About 60 milliliters. Reminds me of Index. Windex! Oh, I love the way Windex looks. There's a meme that I've seen previously where it's like, oh, can't wait for my holiday beverages, and it's a bunch of, like, sodas and whatnot all lined up, and then there's a bottle of Windex in the middle, and it's just like, haha, almost got you. All right. So we're adding two full ounces of our OJ. I think this is supposed to layer up on top because it's going to fall into the ice cube, so I'm trying to be careful about this. Best as I possibly can be. If I pour it on top of the ice cubes, it should do that thing that we wanted to do so much. There is a layer! There is most definitely a layering happening here. It's not as clear, it's not as, clear as the photo, so I have a photo here for reference. This is what I have, this is what I have in the book. Back here, it's a lot more opaque. Maybe they clarify their orange juice. 
And next, we're gonna carefully pour the tequila and blue curacao mixture over the back of the spoon so it slowly pours on top of the orange juice. I know that I'm also going to need a spear of sorts, so I'm going to grab, let's use a cut, let's use a little sword, right? What is the lightsaber color? It is blue, is it not? I will grab a blue sword as the means to put our uh, maraschino cherries over top, which will be our garnish. I will, prov I will prepare that garnish first, actually. Just gets that out of the way, makes it easier. I'm going fishing. Nah, just kidding, I'm not going fishing. Not like that, at least. <laughs> not like this. There is one maraschino cherry. Take you out. Here's another maraschino cherry. I take you out. Take you out. Boop. There we go. Stem off. S stab it. Stab. Stab. That's one moon. Other cherry. That's the other moon. Two moons. Get it? I'll put those maraschino cherries away. Oh, come on. Work with me. Thank you. And now we're going to pour the mixture carefully over the top. Attempting with all carefulness, using a strainer, not to get the big old ice cube in there. I completely screwed things up. So we'll pour this like so, very carefully over the top to layer on top of everything else. Definitely a different layering than I had in mind, but ooh, we gotta have our gotta have our two moons, right? That's the idea. Two moons. That does not really want to stay. I don't think my skewer is large enough. But you know what? That's a skewer nonetheless. That's a cool layering effect. Ooh, I love that. Beautiful. Thank you, meow meow. Blue up on top as well. That's lovely looking. I love that. Wow. That looks a lot better. I think that looks really good from you guys. Oh, it even looks good from my angle, too. Look out for that on the cocktail blog. Oh, that's so pretty looking. Wow. I'm really happy that we were able to do that. That's lovely. Wow. Oh, God, but how does it taste, though? It's definitely a, it's definitely a preparation thing. But I wonder if it tastes as good as it looks. Just a reminder, that was the Tatooine Sunset. And the geeky bartender, apparently a staple at the uh, cantina. Oh, it seems that, where did my, oh. Oh, my moons fell into the planet. They're gone now. Oh, well. <laughs> we tried our bestest. It smells, oh, like tequila. Mm. We had the tequila, we had the tequila and blue curacao up on top. I love the way that that's smelling. It's very agave -y, very desert-like. I appreciate that. So, the topmost layer, the topmost layer is that tequila and blue curacao mixture. Honestly, that tastes delightful. I don't do too, too many tequila cocktails, mostly because I'm just not as versed in those particular cocktails as I are, uh, that spirit as I are other spirits. However, that combo with the blue curacao is really tasty. It's very, very smooth. It is very prominently tequila and is very prominently curacao, very prominently orange-ish like a confectionery orange, a lot of sweetness happening there. I think in order to get the rest of the experience, I need to mix everything together. Or perhaps it's supposed to be enjoyed just like this, but I'm gonna mix it all. It turns a nice... I'll take a picture of this so that everybody can see what color it turns at the very, very end. I'll take a picture from my angle. It's like, it's like green. And the, and the moons are nowhere to be found. I cannot even find the moons anymore. How does it all taste together, though? Oh, that's lovely. So essentially, what we did here is it's like a riff on a tequila sunrise. A tequila sunrise, I believe, uses tequila, OJ, and grenadine. We have tequila, we have OJ, we have grenadine in here. We also have pomegranate liqueur, which in this case is tequila-based, and we also have the blue curacao in there, which is also kind of a 
sideways orange type deal. This is wonderful. It tastes like a tequila sunrise, but with a little something extra. There's an extra tartness that's coming from that pomegranate, and it's a different type of sweetness too. So like as opposed to all the sweetness coming from, let's say, the OJ triple sec orange combo, there's a slight subtlety to something a little bit more cherry-like. And whether that cherry is coming from the maraschino cherries that dropped into it or the pomegranate liqueur might be up for debate. But from what I know of the flavor of these particular maraschino cherries, I want to say it's coming from the pomegranate liqueur instead. It's a lot more syrupy. It's more thick. It's more, it's more sweet in a different kind of way. Ooh, welcome to the club. Welcome to the bar here, Mike Sam. Mike Skern? Skern. Mike Skern 99. Where's number 100? I have to ask. I'm, I'm a funny guy. At least I try to be. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. This is tasty. I do like me Tatooine Sunset. Because it's very tequila sunrise-y. I would think if I was one of the band members in the Cantina band, and I had my little like drink tickets that I could get for performing at the Cantina, I think I'd personally go for something a little more short, something a little less on the sweet side, but like this would be something I feel like if Anna were still up now, I'd have her taste a little bit and she might really like this. She's not a really big tequila gal, but she likes her OJ uh, and she likes her she likes her sweetness. So the Grand in there would be a very, very nice addition there. That's tasty. A nice rip on the tequila sunrise. Very pleasant. And it looked a lot prettier before I completely mixed the whole thing up together. So. That's what I have. I like... I like kind of, I'm not ready to end things yet. I still find, feel kind of on top of my game. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one more cocktail. We've got more plans, so we'll go for that. Michael says, hello, I got married in 99. So that is my connection to the number in the username. Congratulations. It is now, I don't even remember what year it is. My computer says 23. Dude, 24 happy years. Congratulations. I will cheers off to that one. Um, if you ever wind yourself up, you and your partner, on a, in a desert planet with two suns, let me know. Because that sounds kind of fun. I feel into it. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do one more cocktail. I will do one more cocktail this evening because I am I'm having a blast here. Dom says, that's as old as me. LOL, so Dom. I was a, let's see, I was a, I was a 97 boy. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little bit older than your marriage, it seems. It's not in this book. I don't know why I'm looking in this book. It's the master sheet. It's the master recipe book that has all the recipes. I will do one additional cocktail. One additional cocktail. If not because marriage is a beautiful thing. I actually personally am getting married in, in January. I don't know how many months that is from now. Just about six months or so. So in the honor of love, two moons, two suns around the planet... Let's do another cocktail. And that'll be the final one. I promise you there. We have... Yeah, we'll do the blue milk. Why not? We'll do it. This this comes from liquor.com. This one's the blue milk of Tatooine. It is blue. It is milk. There's stuff going on here. So that's what we'll, that's what we'll get into next. And that'll be the last one. Let me grab a coaster. Let's try to keep things clean. My bar is a freaking mess right now, but that's okay. That's why we have Cleaner Cameron who does all the wonderful work afterwards. I liked you. I liked you a lot, so I'm gonna pop you in the front. Very nice, congrats. Thank you so much. Dude, trying to plan for marriage is wild. That's very, very fun. So definitely go through the details of that. Dude, actually speaking of marriage, I have, I have a coffee date <laughs> with our priest next weekend. And I think he wants to talk to me about what it really means to be a Catholic. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I, for a moment, have a very, very particular religious type. I was, I, I'm baptized and confirmed and stuff, and we're getting married in a Catholic church, but I think it's more of a philosophical thing to me. Everybody's got the right answer, in my opinion. But alas, we don't need to get into that. Let's just keep, let's keep to the order and the Sith, you know? Dark, light, blue, and red. So this next one is the Blue Milk of Tatooine according to Liquor.com. This is an opaque blue combination with the blue color in this case coming from the blue curacao. You can get blue in a couple of different ways. You can get your blue from butterfly pea flower. You can get it from the curacao. You can get it from combining red and... Oh, well, you'd have to put something blue in there. I don't know what I was talking about there. There are many ways to blue. This is this particular instance in this case. So, what is it? Blue Milk of Tatooine? Blue. 
I'll have a blue milky on Tatooine. I'll be so blue thinking of my queen. Just kidding, she's a princess in his land. You'll be doing all right with your lightsabers. Wait. Lightsabers of white, not blue. Oh wait, I'll be so blue. Blue, blue, blue milk. Anyway, what do we need in this thing? Do we have to shake this? Maybe. We need to shake everything together. We're gonna add everything into a shaker and then shake and chill well chilled and we're gonna put that into a glass. It looks to be a tall glass here. I run out of tall glasses. We're gonna put it in whatever glass we want to. That's what it's all about. So we're gonna add a couple of things together. I need another shaker. You can grab one of these guys. I'll get one big ice cube, a couple of little, oh, I'm out of little cubes. So I guess we're just getting a big ice cube and I'm gonna crack one of them up. Yeah, actually that's what we'll do. I'm gonna take my only remaining Death Star sphere Whoa, and hopefully not making it. Nope, not making a mess. <laughs> not making a mess. And then crack one of my cubes in it. We're gonna prove yet again how superior cubular cubes are compared to the uh, spherical cubes. Instead for uh, for our cracking and stuff. Oh, please, please. I'm still working on my cracking technique. Come on, buddy. I believe in you. I believe in... Yep, yep. Yeah, just go for it. You know, one of these days, I'm just going to Google how to crack an ice cube. Alexa, how do you crack an ice cube? Here's something I found on reference.com. The application of a sufficient amount of heat melts ice as a solid... The molecules oh. of ice occupy a relatively stable Alexa, how do you crack ice like a bartender? From creativeloafing.com, when the ice arrives, bartenders use chainsaws and a super special wooden and stainless steel ice pick called a trident to break it down into smaller pieces. All right. Um, we all need to come together and buy me a chainsaw, apparently. <laughs> That's just how it has to work. That's what the internet says. So to make our blue milk of Tatooine, we need to add a couple of things together. First, we're going to start off with gin. Here's some gin. I threw it up in the air because I think I'm cool. I'm going to drop this eventually. Two ounces or about 60 milliliters of gin of your choosing. It does not say what particular type of gin. Honestly, if the milk that you're getting from your animal is alcoholic, I think you've got bigger problems than what type of gin you're making or using in your cocktail. Next, we're gonna need a quarter, uh, or excuse me, a half an ounce of blue curacao. I have as well. That's about 15 or so milliliters for my folks across the pond, because I know you exist, and I think the metric system is superior. Next, we're gonna add three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, freshly squeezed if you have it. On the bright side, I do. If you don't have it, if you don't have like limes, that's fine. I, don't, I feel like anytime that somebody calls for something that is specifically squeezed, squeezed, fresh squeezed and stuff, just use whatever you have. No, I don't think you need to feel the pressure of, you know, something that's otherwise. To be fair, it is going to make a slightly different cocktail. Personally, I find that lemons and limes that I squeeze fresh do have a slightly different flavor. But like, if it tastes good, who cares? Unless you're like a paying customer, in which case, I guess the customer is always right. I suppose. We're gonna need three quarters of an ounce, or about 22 milliliters of lime juice. I'm just gonna squeeze this into my shaker and see what we get with that. I did the technique where I squeeze the lime first with my fingies. We'll see where that gets us. Hopefully pretty far. Those two limes together were almost exactly three quarters of an ounce. So, thank you, Lauren. I appreciate you greatly. Add that to our cocktail shaker. Eh, the customer is overrated, especially when the customer is an asshole. In this case, I am my own customer because I'm making my own drinks, and I know for a fact, because of the whole Sith get up thing, I am an ass. 
And asses add three quarters of an ounce of pineapple juice to their cocktail shaker. Go grab my pineapple juice. It's not freshly squeezed either. Despite the fact that, yo, over the, oh, this is awesome. Over the weekend, I had a few of my fraternity brothers over. I'm out of college now, so we just hang out every once in a while. However, we played board games and drank pina coladas out of pineapples. And it was awesome. I still have two pineapples remaining. And uh, I'm thinking about making a souffle with them. I need to pick up some bread, though. I'll do that eventually. That was three quarters of an ounce for about 22 milliliters of pineapple juice in your shaker. Next, we're going to add a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of orja. Orja is an almond-based spirit combo where, at least in my combination, you take a little bit of amaretto, a little bit of almond milk, of orange blossom water and combine that with some sugar and you have orja. That's according to a recipe from a book called Tiki Drinks by Nicole Weston and Robert Sharp. And it's an excellent, excellent recipe. I will pull it up if anybody is curious. It's very good. I encourage everybody to use it. About a half an ounce of your orja. You could also make it from like fresh almond milk and stuff. From like the, you know, crush up the milk, crush up the almonds, get a nut milk bag. You could. Or you could eat. Evil. and prepare ahead of time like any good cooking show next we're going to add a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of specifically gifford vanilla syrup and i'm just i'm i'm not no no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go that way i'm not buying specifically gifford vanilla syrup instead i'm just gonna i'm just gonna it's so little compared to all the other stuff that we put in here i have these char yes cocktail company charred oak and maple um syrup I'm gonna use that. It's got notes of vanilla and stuff and maple and whatnot. I'm just gonna do that because I can. About a half an ounce of that. There's already a bunch of stuff in here already, so it's you know it, it's 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 within universe, right? Maybe you are a caretaker of the animals that produce the blue milk. I believe they are the bamboos, and perhaps the particular blend of herbs, spices, and totally grass-fed. I think, I don't know what, this comes from Tatooine, so I don't even know what the Banthas are eating out there. It just makes, it, it just makes you, in this case, the milk kind of tastes like charred oak and maple. Maybe that's your Bantha. This is my Bantha. Mike says, you rebel you. Oh my, this, this is rebel I am. And next we're going to add an ounce or 30 milliliters of cream of coconuts. I've, I had this thing of cream of coconut that's been hanging around here. It's not quite dethawed. I have a little bit of it. I have some left of it. I really need to preserve this thing. So after the stream is over, when I'm doing all my cleanup and whatnot, I open this container of Coco Lopez. And I've done it before, and I won't do it again. If you open up Coco Lopez, definitely slap a container on that. Put it in another container. Do whatever you have to do, because this stuff gets weird if you leave it out. So that would be my professional and personal suggestion. So we're going to add a full, okay, a heaping, heaping ounce of coconut cream because of my own lack of measuring ability. Oh, it tastes so good. I love the taste of coconut. There cannot possibly be anything bad about this drink. Nothing bad at all. All right, and that was everything. My fingers be sticky and my shaker be full. So let's give this thing a shake and be happy. And I'll throw this ginger away. God, my bucket is so full. I need a bigger bucket. All right. Let's combine everything together. We'll strain out any liquid from our ice that was thawing. There's honestly not that much of it, but I got a little out that I could. Combine liquids with solids, slap it on, and give it a shake. And I'm gonna look for a glass in the background. I know what I want. All right. I don't know. I feel like I drink my milk out of a Stein, so <laughs> I'm going to put it in a Stein glass. We'll bring our cocktail angle over here. Pop it down one last time for this evening as we wrap up Star Wars cocktails in honor of May 4th tomorrow. Hello, everybody. 
It's the other angle. It's magical. It's spectacular. It's a Google Pixel 2. Thank you, Google. We'll slap the top off of this guy. And uh, we strain it over the top. Uh, do I still have another strainer remaining? I do, and I put it over top of my glasses for some reason. Don't know why I did. Oh, oh I remember what I did. Because it dropped to the floor. I'm not about that life. Blue milk! Wow, that is significantly less thick than I thought it was going to be. That is lovely. Wow. I love the way that looks from you guys' angle. Sometimes, honestly, sometimes I'm jealous of y'all. Sometimes you get the better angle, and sometimes I get the better angle. That's nice looking. This is the blue milk of Tatooine, evidently. According to at least liquor.com. And liquor.com is apparently the source for all liquor. That's why it's called liquor.com. Not liquorsuggestion.com. Just liquor.com. This looks almost too good to drink. Well, well, I don't, I don't know if anything's too good to drink. <laughs> so, this is our blue milk of Tatooine. There are so many. Uh, let me first by say words. There are a lot of different recipes of blue milk of Tatooine. Disney has their own recipe. Liquor.com has their own recipe. The Geeky Bartender book has their own recipe. You probably have your own recipe. If it's blue and opaque, you probably have a blue milk recipe. You could probably just add curacao to milk and call it blue milk. Which, come to think of it, is exactly what it sounds like in that case. It's great. It looks thinner than the photo, but I bet it will taste great. So, speaking of which, it smells slightly coconutty. I need to blow my nose for a moment, because again, these contacts, these contacts that I have in my eyes are a little old, and they're not the right size, and it's been years since I bought colored contacts, so I'm getting a little sniffly. I apologize about that. But it's got it smells like li it smells like lime and coconut. It's a it's tropical smelling. It's nice. And it's got a nice foam on the top of it too. And it tastes coconut, lime, that syrup in there. What else did I add? There was pineapple juice in there. I taste that. It's very tropical tasting. There's also a nice that cream of coconut there is providing a very nice texture. There is something... What else there? What else did we add to that? The curacao? That was probably the curacao. Yeah, curacao is like a kind of like a... Curacao itself, like blue curacao, is supposed to be orange flavored. And like, yes, it does taste like orange, but it kind of tastes more like orange candy as opposed to like orange juice or like orange zest. And there's a bit of an orange candy component there. It's blending in a lot with the pineapple, but this is a very tropical tasting drink. This is by no means the same, like when I think of blue and milk, I think of the color blue. Nailed it. It's actually a little more green, so maybe we're a little off on the blue assumption there. In terms of milk, it just doesn't have the same, t it's nice and smooth, like some milks are, but it's not as smooth as milk is. It certainly doesn't have the same viscosity, the same texture. It's a heavier drink than milk is. So like, is it true to, let's say the universe in which it resides? No. Is it blue and is it opaque? Yeah, and by that standard, hell yeah, it's blue milk. This is this is what it is. It's great. I bet it does, it does taste pretty good. It does taste pretty good, all things considered. It's definitely more tropical. It's very, it's very much, like we made tiki drinks last week and it is a lot more coconut lime than anything else that we had previously. I think those are the two main flavors that I got, despite the fact that we put a bunch of different things in there. The whole fact that we subbed out, what is it, the vanilla syrup for the charred oak and maple, I don't think mattered at all. I don't really taste any of that in there. Just, there's just a lot going on here. What was the alcohol that we put in here? We put the curacao. Let me think if I can remember. Oh, we put gin in here. Yeah, that's gone. I don't even know why you put gin in there. Flavors are gone. Just put vodka in there. Do us all a favor. Do some vodka. In any case, who am I to be the critic? It tastes great. It's delicious. It is. It is very. Uh, yeah, all the all criticisms considered, all criticisms aside, it tastes good. It just. It's a sweet drink. It's got those tropical flavors and it's fruity, and I like that. And it's not. At least for me personally, it's not super sour. It is lovely and sweet, and I also love the taste of coconut and pineapple. So this is this is totally up my alley. I'm totally down with that. I could chug multiple blue milks if I wanted to, I guess. 
In any case, that's it. That's all I got this evening. That is all, that is not, I think the only recipe that I missed, and I'll just recite it for you all now, just so you guys can have the fun of it if you want to, because I'm not gonna make it this evening, I'm, I'm up, was another recommendation um, from my buddy Dom out there. It was another TikTok that you shared with me a while ago, and it's for the Jedi Fallen Order Health Stim, which combines sour apple liqueur, one and a half ounces, one and a half ounces of blue raspberry mix, three ounces of vodka, Strain into three shot glasses and then top with a little bit of blue curacao. It kind of looks like a lightsaber. Here, this is the this is the photo that I have. This is the that I fall on order. Health stim. I remember sending you that one. Yeah, honestly, that one was that one I didn't wind up getting to. And I didn't prioritize either. I've never played. I've always wanted to play like a Star Wars game like that. For example, Fall in Order, but I never have. One day I will. One day, one day in my in my in my age, I will have all the time to go back and experience all the Star Wars stuff that I thought I've already experienced before, but that my brain just didn't absorb properly. But alas, here we are. So, a lot of the cocktails that we covered this evening do not look anything like they did when we first made them. So I'll put that little disclosure out there that all the one I'm gonna go through all I'm gonna go through all the recipes and cover what we covered this evening. There is also these videos come out on a VOD channel. It's a YouTube channel. It's the same name as the channel and every single recipe is in the description there. I also do a cocktail blog on our Discord server and I will put all of my thoughts and criticisms and photos and whatnot of the recipes as well. And you can do with it what you please. I wanna give these recipes out to people. These drinking is meant to be shared with other people. So please do of them what you will. I will try my best to go through the recipes now as it means to kind of close things out as we approach 11 30 p.m tattooing eastern standard time and we'll head on through that dom says do you like souls games because it's kind of a souls likes games i've never played a souls like game technically i think hollows knight might have been souls like in its own way but no i've never played dark souls never played uh bloodborne and never played elder ring i want to though so many games that i want to play so the first cocktail that we covered this evening was this guy over here, which looks like a dark, dark mess. And that's because it was the Mustafar Lava Flow, a recommendation from Dom as well, where we combine two ounces, two and a half ounces of spiced rum, excuse me, two dashes of coconut cream, three ounces of orange juice, and either black food dye or activated charcoal. We blend that all together and we put it into a glass. We top it with some strawberry puree and some mango puree to get that visage of lava flowing down the dark black sands of Mustafar. It looked really cool. It had a nice like airy rummy flavor to the bottom of it. And then the powerful packed sweetness of the fruit strawberry and uh, mango as well. I had never crushed up a mango before, so it was my first experience, and I'd never had it in a cocktail yet, so it was delightful. And mango, if it's ripe and proper, is an excellent, excellent combo. Dom says, if and when you decide to try those, let me know. I'll give you lore and little tips. Ooh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so the next cocktail that we covered uh, was another another fun one, and this was this cocktail right here called RDs, aka Java Juice, from this geeky bartender book by the geeky chef Cassandra Reader herself. Basically, what we do is we combine rye whiskey, spiced maple syrup, or spiced syrup plus maple syrup together with half an ounce of fresh lemon juice, two to three dashes of Peshad's bitters, and a couple of ice cubes. The rye whiskey was two ounces, and the maple syrup was three to four teaspoons. I don't remember what the conversion is there. But essentially what we do is we shake that up, we pour it into a glass, and we add some chilled bacon ale on top of it. I don't have bacon ale, so we decided to create some bacon. We made some bacon, we had some very, very it, we, it tasted very, very good. We almost smoked out the entire apartment. My dearest A2N2 decided to help us out with that. Uh, and so instead of using chilled bacon ale we used chill ale and then just added bacon to it and then double strained the whole thing out we also tried to rim the side with some bacon but um apparently none of us were really on our game today i will say it tasted pretty good it tasted mostly of the golden ale there it was a little it had a little bit of those maple notes there and a bit of the spice from the rye whiskey it was tasty but i think what i really liked was we took a piece of the bacon and put it into the shaker and then shook that rest, the rest of the cocktail and then strained it all out. And I went back into the shaker and ate the bacon that had been sitting in the rest of the mass, and it was wonderful. Take all the flavors, 
and invert them. Instead of being a little low on the bacon, it was really high on the bacon. Instead of being like really kind of low on the rye and spice sides, it tasted like somebody had like taken bacon and soaked it in maple syrup and rye whiskey. And I think the bacon, in my opinion, was even more delicious than the drink itself. If I had a picture to show you or any more left, I would, but I ate it all because it was delicious. And that was, that was what we had experienced as we were creating the, what is it, Arties, the AKA the Jawa Juice. The next cocktail that we covered, which is not here anymore because I drank it all, is a shot actually that I created the other night called The Balance of the Force, inspired by The Balance of the Force. The idea is you take a single layer of blue curacao syrup and on top of that add a little bit of blue raspberry syrup. Atop on that, you add some Campari, some bitter orange liqueur, and on top of everything else, you dash Angostura bitters as you see the Sith Force pushing against the Jedi's. It was really cool. Cinematically, it was a joy. And it, it went down really easy. Just a single shot, it went down super easily. It had those like bitter notes and dry notes from the Angostura and the Campari, which for me was kind of sitting on the front of my palate. And then the sweet notes from the blue curacao and the blue raspberry sitting on the back. Very pleasant, easy to take. And if, well, we love a good conflict. So I'd do another one of those any day. The next cocktail that we made, which is this kind of green mask that you see over here, was also a cinematic experience, also inspired by some scenes that I was reminded by by our beautiful community members. I call that one the Super Laser Beam because of the Death Star. The Death Star fires a super laser beam. The idea is you have two cocktails that get mixed together into another cocktail. The first cocktail being the planet of your choosing. In this case, we chose Alderaan. Alderaan is a planet that is nice and blue, full of culture and the arts, where we take a quarter of an ounce of butterfly pea flower infused gin or empress gin if you want to buy it off the shelf combine it with three quarters of an ounce of sambuca a licorice liqueur and combine it with another ounce of gin that just kind of sits in a glass all on its own unsuspecting planet off to the side then what we do is we take the photon beam and charge our death star with it when i say charge our death star what i mean is we have a spherical ice sphere that is hollowed out in the middle by freezing it partially so that we have a gap in the middle and a wall of ice on the outside and we fill that with the proton the, the laser the super laser beam part of the cocktail which is one part midori or melon liqueur one part orange juice one part sparkling wine and one part lemon juice the proportions there are a little up in the air because uh, we tried it out and it turned out pretty well and what you do is you take the you take the laser beam, the super laser charge, and put it into your Death Star and place your Death Star on top of your Alderaan, on top of your planet. And you can either let it come to temperature and slowly drip out and slowly break the planet to pieces, or just crack that sucker and just spill it all over the place and make a total mess. And then get that green shit that you see in the corner. And that's what's left of our planet. And what you're left with is a cocktail that, to be honest, it mostly tastes like the sweetness of your orange liqueur, your le the tartness of your lemon juice, your Midori, and that Sambuca. The Sambuca is very well uh, represented there. It is probably the most forward flavor that we've got there. And it's the only time that I've had a Sambuca in a cocktail where I was like, yeah, this stands on its own, as well as balancing out nicely with everything else. It could definitely be modified a little bit and probably wean back on a couple of things, but hey, it was fun, and I got the and the actual hollowed out Death Star actually worked, which I'm very happy that that happened on stream. I had a backup, and it worked out well. The next cocktail that we made after the Super Laser Beam was we did that, we did that. Oh, this one over here. This tall one over here is our Youngling Slayer. Our Youngling Slayer is also by a recommendation from my pal Dom. It came from the Sin City bartender, which also made. I don't know what other cocktail it was. It was the other recommendation. And the Youngling Slayer combines basically a bunch of Sour Patch Kids together in a glass with some luster dust, some two ounces of blue raspberry vodka, five dashes of orange bitters, six ounces of lemon lime soda, Sprite, and a half an ounce of Island Pucker Punch. I don't have Island Pucker Punch. So I put a little bit of pineapple liqueur in there, a little bit of banana liqueur, a little bit of orange liqueur, a little bit of sour apple liqueur, and a little bit of blue curacao. And you got that thing. All the Younglings float to the bottom because they're dead. And it it tastes nice. It's got a nice sweetness to it. It's balanced out with the sourness from the citric acid that it is, that has absorbed and a little bit of the sour apple that was in there. It's very pleasant. I feel like it would taste really, really good blended. We'll blend the younglings another time, it seems. 
The next cocktail that we made, which has resulted in this little monstrosity over here, which also got mixed up, was a beautifully layered cocktail called the Tatooine Sunset, also coming from the Geeky Bartender book. The idea was we would take three layers of the cocktail and put them up on top of each other. The first layer was a layer of one ounce of pomegranate liqueur and half an ounce of grenadine. On top of that, we have a layer of half an ounce of fresh lemon juice and two ounces of orange juice. And then the layer on top of that is a combination of a one and a half ounces of silver tequila and a half an ounce of blue curacao. All in all, it had a pretty cool gradient of a nice dark red on the bottom, an opaque orange in the middle, and a nice bright blue up on top. Off the first sip, it tasted like tequila and curacao, which tastes amazing, and it smells really good too. And you would mix it up together. I don't remember what my tasting notes are. Oh, shit, it's a tequila sunrise. That's exactly what it is. That OJ, that grenadine, that tequila, all very prevalent, all very tasty. Those agave notes are front and center, and it's just nice. It basically tastes like a tequila sunrise, but slightly different and certainly doesn't look like the same color. You have to mix it up first in order to get those tequila sunrise notes, but it's, but it's very tasty. And then the final cocktail, which we just landed on here, was this blue milk contra um, compliments of liquor.com. Liquor.com, I'm pulling it up here. Liquor.com. And that combines uh, the blue milk of Tatooine, combines two ounces of gin, half an ounce of blue curacao, three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of pineapple juice, a half an ounce of orja, half an ounce of vanilla syrup. I didn't use that, I used chard opic and maple syrup. And then an ounce of cream of coconut. Putting that all together, you have something that is blue and it is opaque. Therefore, it is indeed blue milk, and it tastes kind of like lime, coconut, and a little bit of pineapple. It's got a, vis it's got a viscosity that is a little much in terms of the milk comparison, but it is most certainly blue. A little green, if I'm being considerate there. Uh, but you know, there is no one way to blue milk. Disney's got their own reference, uh, they got their own recipe. Liquor.com has their own recipe. The, the Geeky Bartender has their own recipe. Everybody's got their own recipe. And if it's blue and opaque, I feel like you can call it blue milk. And honestly, that's where that's where I'm going to draw the line there. And that is everything I had this evening. That was all the cocktails that we did. So, with all that said, I want to thank you all for coming along and joining us this evening. As I end things off, I want to go back to our cool little Sith Lord that we thing that we had over here. Let me put my let me put my hood back on, put our Sith Lord lights back, and I'll turn my lightsaber back on as we go to our end screen. And things that end things off. This was eventful. I thank you very much, Dom. I had an excellent time. So I thank you, everybody, so much for coming along. This was exciting because not only were we able to pull recipes from various different sources, but we also were able to have fun with it, completely event the shit out of this, and I even got to make a couple of cocktails on my own in... Not too bad for some first attempts. I had a blast, and I hope you had a blast as well. I do Wednesday cocktails every single 8 p.m. Wednesdays, every single week. It's a different theme, so pop back for something you might like. Make some suggestions as well. I'm op always open to suggestions, and we just have a lot of fun with this. We got a Discord server where pretty much everything winds up anyways. We kind of pal around and stuff, and that's where a lot of the, all the recipes wind up going anyways. Um, but, but, enough of, but enough of me like hyping myself up. Thank you guys for giving your contributions and being able to make this show just, just more fun. It gets more, every once in a while, I get really, really, really pumped up for a cocktail stream. And this one, I was really, really hyped for. So that's a personal thank you from me to all of y'all. Rich says, I don't know shit about Star Wars, but had a fun time. See, you don't even need to know the con context of what's going on. Sometimes cocktails without context are just really fun. In any case, thank you all very much for coming along. I had a blast. To everyone out there, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Whether you find yourself on the dark side of the Force or the Jedi side of the Force, I'm sure you had a good time either way. And we'll see you again next week. If the moon is shining where you are, perhaps there's one moon, two moons, or even three moons. May you have a wonderful rest of your night, whether extended or otherwise. If there are multiple suns where you are, like on the beautiful, beautiful planet of Tatooine, may you have a wonderful rest of your morning. And don't get sunburnt out there, because that would be unfortunate. Dawn, Twilight, Tatooine, Alderaan, Hoth, Earth, whatever planet or galaxy that you may be in, near, near, or far, far away, thank you all so very much. I'll see you next time at the bar. Bye.